and stuff.
Begin the excavation log. Sloan Cameron here, all inside to Petra. Me and the Wayfinders just found the coolest artifact I think I've ever... Again? Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! If you want to mess with these artifacts, you got to go through me! Begin the excavation log. Sloan Cameron here, all inside to Petra. Me and the Wayfinders just found the coolest artifact I think I've ever... Again? Come on! Whoa, whoa, whoa! If you want to mess with these artifacts, you gotta go through me!
Welcome everyone to OWCS. Whoa, we are far away from each other, Whoa. Hold me, Chiclet. The wild card. <laughs> and we're looking for the one in the middle. I'm Chiclet, that's Wolf. Way. I'm like here. Anyway. We're on a different casting there. setup than usual today. Um, you guys might be able to tell. I do feel like with this, um, with our banner down here as well, I feel like I'm like very low down to the ground, but it's okay. <laughs> we're we're, uh, we, we're doing it online. The Korean casters are right next to us. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to today's matches as today's wild card match will determine the final seed to go to OWCS Asia. That's right. We had all the champions from Pacific, Japan, and Korea. Now we're just looking for one extra sl slot between the three teams. I do think Korean, should, Korea team should be coming on top, even though they're seed four. But you never know, 3-2-1 diving, six below. They were pretty good during their own season. This is actually the first time where different region clashed together before Asia. Yeah. It's going to be the first time, so it's really exciting mm -hmm. to see how they're going to match up against each other. It might give us a, a small precursor to how the Asia tournament will look in terms of style. Mm. Um, and obviously, these are the teams that didn't quite make it. So they're not the highest level from each region, but they are pretty good representative, especially Yeti, who was a team that was very close to actually making that miracle run to the finals. Um, could be a team that you know, ends up being super high level. We'll see how uh, Six Blow does as well, because I think Six Blow was one of my favorite teams to watch mm -hmm. this season. And I think it would be really sad if they didn't make it to Asia, but, you know, it's tough competition today. Yeah, it's going to be, and we have a lot of questions. Okay, what 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 will they look like with Dukes, Tracer, and and TKQ Sojourn? That duo looked like really strong when they're popping up, but when they're facing against like Knifer, Knife Viver, uh, let's see how that is going to plan out because we will actually have that. We never had these type of matches, so it'll be a good uh, good hint before Asia of of like how strong is. Okay, this is a fourth seed from Korea. If they beat Japan, that's Japanese, Japanese third seed. So you could kind of see the difference in power level. Not at the highest, but yeah. this could be a good comparison going forward. No, definitely. And also, you know, to think about another aspect of this is that um, the Japanese and Pacific regions normally play online, uh, whereas oh, Korea yeah. plays here land. Mm -hmm. So that might be something that's a little bit less familiar for Yeti, obviously playing uh, in an online tournament versus playing here in the studio. Korean Overwatch has kind of almost always been exclusively on LAN. So, I mean, there's been a few few tournaments, obviously, here and there that were online, but for the most part, wasn't a LAN environment. So, could be a little bit strange for Yeti. Might feel like a scrim, you know? <laughs> I wonder if they're actually all playing from home or not, or they have a, a separate practice house. And these are the viewership incentive. You guys should have already got all of it. If you haven't, make sure. Shame on you, but now you're stuck with us <laughs> until you get them. <laughs> Um, I actually went in and logged in and verified all mine, um, which is it was pretty hard for me to get these because I'm always here and not at home watching it. But I, oh. I've turned it, I turned it on, and made sure to watch as much as I could when I was not on my work days. I was just, I just have it on. I, it was pretty easy. I mean, there was, I think, when we had a second part, uh, we still had the EMEA and NA. It just kicked in later, and then I was just filled with the number on top. Like, whoa, I got so many stuff just by watching free, free things. G Clef is like actually he went to his like aunt's house and like logged into his secondary account there and like he like went to his sister's <laughs> house. G Clef called like his third cousin. He was like, "Listen, I need I I need a favor. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to ask you. I'm gonna have to ask you to to log in. Um, I connect my Battle.net ID. The yeah. third one, the fourth one. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I only have two, so that's all right. Uh, and both actually got all the drops, and I'm pretty happy about that. So I think we do have the schedule here. We're at the edge of stage one right before the main event of OWCS Asia. That's where we are, wild card, and a bit different compared to NA and EME. I know they're just getting the Swiss uh, for stage two right now, as I guess we're kind of ahead in schedule if you, if you want to really think about the images. Yeah, um, you know, we have a longer stage, and ours is a little bit more broadcast than NA and EMEA, so very different, but ultimately we are gonna have that massive LAN event here in Korea, and we are in the wild card portion of the tournament, which is just today. That's it. It's just one day of matches. Find that final seed. It is going to be a round robin uh, between these teams, and the winner will take all. Uh, obviously, if we do have a tie, we will play tiebreakers, but mm -hmm. it is going to be um, kind of like our seeding decider matches if you guys watch those. Here is how Pacific shook down as Honeypot did take out Daff in that finals, and then 3-2-1 diving um, was, you know, eliminated in lower bracket finals. That's why they're the wildcard team. Yes, and uh, against 
ATFM was actually a crazy setup series there, 3-2. Uh, and Honeypot was a big surprise, a lot. And most of uh, most of the analysis also thought Daff was surely going to take the entire thing. And then just Honeypot showed up on the Grand Finals day. They really proved really hard. And I think they really had the map selected and the studies done as Daff was just waiting on top. 3-2 on diving against Honeypot in the lower bracket. It was a tough run, but I think 3-2-1 Diving still showed what they could do on some of the maps, especially the Winston, instant change into Winston Sojourn. And that, this was actually two weeks ago. So they actually started the, the dive con with some Bridget, uh, Bridget earlier on compared to the other regions, which they just started last week. So I'm pretty sure they have done a lot of practice going forward. Yeah, this is definitely, I think, our biggest underdog, as here's Japan, and you and I cast a ton of Japan, and we did see Insomnia uh, make it through to the finals. Uh, a lot of people were expecting uh, that to be 6 blow, but they did, of course, end up falling down to the lower bracket, and they beat Rivati to advance to the wild card match, but they, of course, will not be... Uh, they did not play in the finals. Veril swept the finals 4-0. Pretty one-sided affair there. Yes. Pretty brutal. I did not expect Insomnia to go, just go down 4-0. And if you look, I looked at, of course, all the matches. And uh, to be honest, it wasn't like really close in any of those maps. And I was, I was very surprised because both the lower bracket and also Vero versus Insomnia went so quick. The broadcast was, I think, less than two and a half hours total, which I was something that I was expecting coming out from Japan. Yeah, I think Veril making it was not a surprise. Insomnia making the finals was a small surprise, but Six Blow, um, you know, it feels super strange, like I said, if they didn't actually end up going to the land because they were a top two team for so long. Then we had this just yesterday, Falcons taking out Wack in the finals. It looked like at the beginning of the series that it was going to just be a 4-0 stomp. Wack came back a little bit, but weren't able to bring us to that final map. Unfortunately, stepping off not contesting that final flashpoint. Really yeah. not boop. ideal. Boop. Little and boop. the Doomfist. Well, Doomfist was waiting for the teammates, first of all, for a couple extra seconds. Well, that was the finish and a bit of off moments. And a little bit surprising to see also Yeti get 3 0 by From the Gamer. Uh, I thought that was going to be a closer series as well. But now Yeti, after. Getting the upset win in seeding deciders against WAC completely dropped down here to wild card. And they're hoping to be the fourth uh, Korean team to make it to OWCS Asia, as we do have four representatives here since we're the strongest region at the moment. That could change in the future if we end up seeing like Feral take the whole thing. But as for now, uh, it is definitely a Korea dominated region. It, it certainly is. As Yeti, we'll have more time to talk about them. So just talking about what, what kind of happened between FTG and Yeti. Uh, mostly Dongak was into pressure because he's the only tank and FTG just went around him and made sure they had focus on him because if Dongak's not there as the solid support, uh, solid uh, pillar of the team, they just break down. <clears throat> and that was mainly the focus of FTG and it just worked like a charm 3-0. Yeah. And we'll see if Yeti can change some of uh, the play today because there's a lot to talk about, especially in this first matchup. Here are our teams. We do have three matches today. So, like I mentioned, it is a round robin, just a single round robin. So, uh, each team will play against the other two teams. And once that is finished, we'll have a standings that showcase who is actually going to Overwatch Champion Series Asia. Mm -hmm. And so, there is a there is a possibility that we will have a tie break. It can only be done if the teams beat each other. It has to be 1-1 one, one for all three because we have head-to-head. -head. Yeah, and then, of course, they all would have to beat each other with the same map differential as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if one team uh, goes 1-1 one and one, but went 4-0 and then went, like, you know, or sorry, 3-0. 4-0. <laughs> yeah, it's not best of sevens. <laughs> one team went 4-0 and then, you know, lost, but they lost, like, you know, 3-2. Mm -hmm. They would still have a better differential than the other teams, so could potentially end up uh, going through anyways. So here's our map pool. Um, still unchanged from what we have been watching throughout the playoffs. And we're still not seeing too much Eichenvall. A little bit sad about that. Um, Paraiso also I still vault, rare. I think, uh, total. I was trying to do the map count. I actually did, could not have enough time to cover all the maps. I think twice in the entire season. Yeah. Of course, it was added uh, four weeks after, but still just twice. Paraiso once. Route 66 still zero. Yeah, still zero. It could happen. It could happen today. You never know. Yeah. 
I hope so. I hope we get to see some less common maps that are being played. And some more Busan. I think there's still a lot of room for Sigma and some Wrecking Balls out there because there are some players that could play Wrecking Ball today. So here's our order of matches today. We will have starting and ending with Korea. Six Blow versus Yeti, which I think should be the best match of the day, to be honest. We'll see how 3-2-1 Diving does do. Um, and then Six Blow will face off against 3-2-1 Diving, our Pacific representative. And then Yeti will face off against 3-2-1 Diving in the end of tonight. So three first to three matches, three best of fives. Mm -hmm. As I usually say, people like to say best three because draws can happen, but they haven't happened yet. First to three. Oh, I don't think we had a single draw in our entire region. No, we, it, it's hard. It's really hard to actually have a draw. Yeah, it's just this meta is not super defense favored. Mm -hmm. We don't have two CP. We haven't had it for a long time. Two Unless CP, we saw a lot we had of draws. Weeks of Malga. <laughs> it could have happened, but the, uh, the hotfix came soon enough to save everyone. So I was very happy about that. Fixed. Uh, we, week number five. Hot fixed. And I don't think uh, Overwatch 2 has been hot fixed that quickly. I mean, <laughs> Even including Overwatch yeah, 1 no, I don't in think the years. Not really. Um, <laughs> they did not want to have another GOAT situation on their hands, I think. They wanted to, 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 to nip it in the bud, as they say. As Let's talk about our first matchup, because mm. this sounds on paper like, okay, if you're watching this, you watched OWCS Korea, you're like, I'm the Korea guy, I watch it. Yeti's my team, I know they're going to the LAN. This team is going to 3 0 6 blow. But I'll tell you why it might not happen. And it's because Pressure okay. is... Arguably the best tank player in Japan, even though he's on uh, the third place team right now. He is so insanely good at Sigma, also Doomfist, also Orisa. He's been so consistent, and I think that one thing that he, that he has is that wide berth of heroes he can play that Donghak, I think, struggles on some of the other picks. Like, we talked about how consistent Donghak has been and how he has been able to sometimes overperform when his team needs him the most. And I would still give Donghak and the squad, like, an edge, but I think Pressure is the one matchup here where Six Blow could potentially break through and make this series really interesting. And also to go a little deeper into it, Pressure is also an extremely aggressive tank out of all the players that I can think of uh, from Pacific Japan and also Korea. Uh, you don't really have this much of aggressiveness coming out from the tank player. And he has been having these incredible moments, especially on the Doomfist and Dongak. Also recently just had one of the best crazy Flashpoint on that Doomfist. So I think the moment we go into Flashpoint might actually be the difference maker between the two teams. A lot of Six Blow, uh, their wins were with pressure in the DPS line. The support line wasn't necessarily that impactful. Um, you look at Yeti though, and it's Viper and it's Knife. So, you know, Dukes and, and TQQ are going to have a lot of... Uh, a tall task, let's just say. This is going to be a big challenge. Um, a lot of work ahead of them. As Irony also is one of our best support players in Korea. So I think when you add all of these things together, you still have to favor Yeti pretty heavily going into this series. But I do hope that Pressure and his DPS line can, can make this interesting today. As, you know, getting that wild card match always feels... You know, like, it's a it's a nice little consolation prize. Like, maybe we could still make it, but having to face off against a Korean team to get there makes it so tough. And also, since it's uh, before we start started, might not, might not have been too much time for Yeti to actually recollect themselves because yesterday uh, that loss was kind of brutal. And we, towards the end, we could kind of feel that they, were, they had some emotional damage <laughs> because nothing was working out. That push for, towards the end was just not it for Yeti as things were just breaking into pieces as Viper was trying to hold the team, but no one else seemed like they were on the same page. And Six Blow don't really have those moments. They are usually a lot more calm. They don't have these ups and downs as much. So if pressure really uh, punch into the right, right place, I think there could be some dents and cracks coming up from Yeti. Now, I'm not surprised to see Nepal here. Um, a six Blow also really love this map, and it has been one of the good maps for Pressure, whether he's on the Junker Queen, which is quite rare nowadays, but it was quite common uh, mm. throughout OWCS Japan, or the Doomfist. He's very strong on this map, so might end up just being the Arisa Mirror here, and I expect Dongak will play Arisa, and even if Pressure wants to try to play Doomfist, he'll probably see that and be like, well, time to swap. But it's going to be a good... Uh, indicator of how these two teams will match up against each other and then of course loser will have map selection moving forward just like our playoffs format so this is uh, going to be an interesting one gcluff i really 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 hoping six blow can show up today yes i think this will be a pretty good map to 
First of all, tank, uh, uh, tank, the tank duel, either the Orisa, maybe there's a, some chance uh, for the Wrecking Ball to even show up because pressure is, uh, your pull, I think, is slightly better compared to Donga in terms of the pull and how deep it can be. So this will be pretty good as uh, for the DPS. I think they just have to show up big time as we will be matching a lot of Tracer Sojourns here as we get things loaded up in our first map, Nepal. Five, four, get off that three, Sigma pressure. Two. He's not going to get off that Sigma, actually, G-Club. He is going to stick with the Sigma here oh, yes, that's, on Sanctum. Yeah, with the Cassidy, I think Six Glow has six Q on Cassidy for a reason. Now, the problem with this uh, this composition for Six Blow is that it's very difficult to maintain shield uptime, and the uh, Sanctum control here in this choke normally is just dominated by shield break if you're running the Sigma, but since there's Narisa there, she can flank, and then... You could just get a really nice angle here on the Sojourn as Knife and start right in the back line. But TQQ winning out the war so far here into Knife, doing way more damage here. Yeah, that's exactly as this, uh, this team comp is supposed to put a lot more pressure to Knife. There's the first cap though for Yeti. And Dongang is holding to the side, still okay with about half HP. He'll be mag grenaded, but he's fine. And, and now the clock is ticking against Six Blow here. TQQ did a lot of damage to Knife, but now Knife is really getting the better of him and the rest of the squad here as they have no control whatsoever of this joke. Yeah, that's the thing. In terms of angle where you can strike, uh, Knife will have a lot more from the side. Dongak getting chunked down. That was pretty nice to come back. Uh, the work from Irony and Blizz back there. And Yeti still holding the point. So Looks about like 30%. Six Bull want to fight with the Flux. And, you know, Yeti are going to be able to split away from that pretty decently. Obviously, Knife is about to have his overclock as well. Might just be able to knock pressure out of the sky. This is going to be the matchup of ultimates here between these two. And it, Six Blow need to be decisive. Window first. A quick attack with the rush. And Knife, not yet with the overclock, but Six Blow, they all back off. So, Knife, yeah, the patience here. Keeping that ultimate for the later fight. And here is DQQ again. Not yet with the dead eye, but slowly building that up 82%. There's a beat. From Kiru with the engage, explode with the fluff. They want to turn this around. And Orisa isolated. There's the Terra from Donga. Perfect timing with the beat. And Yeti going to deliver the first team fight, which was a long neutral, so it's actually going to be 70% for Yeti. Yeah, it was I was gonna say like we might actually have the first map of control ever in in uh, you know Asian Overwatch history that's decided without a single death. <laughs> um, but finally, they do commit the flux there, and Donghak ends up getting the Terra Surge in return as Six Blow pile in to try to follow up on that flux. They end up getting surged to death, and now TQQ no line of sight here, and that should just be the first round unless yeah. a huge mistake is made. It's gonna be very tough with the Cassidy down and also Sigma. Can't have a tough time going inside, and that is Viper again, striking with the Pulse Bomb, even after the field. So Kumi down, and that will force the entire team to be gone, unless Dukes, there's a small touch, but only for a couple more seconds. A lot of delay, Dukes here, but can't touch. That will be the first going to Yeti. Pretty one-sided start here. I think compositionally, I'm not a big fan of trying to, you know, run the Cassidy into the Sojourn and try to use the shield to, to get him into position. I think if you're going to play this composition, you can actually push up with your Sigma and have TQQ try to help burst down Doha because they got him low a few times, but... Yeah, they did, and I think... Uh, I think Six Blow was actually looking for the side control entirely and expecting it to go into the capture zone, so they actually, actually control the higher angle. But I mean, that never happened because Orisa was always there. Coordination way better there on that wraparound mm -hmm. coming through from Viper. Really easy to play that one out. So we move into our second round here. Gonna stick with the Sigma. Mm. I want to see a little bit tighter play here from Japan. TQQ, I think he needs to be doing more than what he is doing right now. And I think targeting not the Sojourn, but actually the enemy Orisa might be the best bet to get that first pick. Yeah, before Dongak had the Terra Surge, so uh, extra tool, extra safety tool for himself to actually stay alive. Skumit, caught there before going into safe arms of Lucio. He was next to him, but the shots just land at his Viper first kill. And they will continue pushing. And Knife strikes again. Pressure down. I will do have to regroup. That was just a really good call from Yeti because Six Bullet can push with the speed boost of Lucio. And they try to drop down and, and put pressure in a position to, to push onto Donghak. And TQ can fall up with the roll. D Dukes has blink, right? But no mobility for Sakume, and he's just left alone. And Yeti identified that so quickly. A wraparound and take them out. That's the end of that fight. Knife halfway to an overclock here as well as the flip comes through so early. 
And the pressure is real here as Yeti coming all the way to the side, even outside, to do extra damage as Viper is having the time of his life. Six blow, bit of a rotation, in so they can get closer to the capture. About 29, 30% for Yeti. So things are still not over. But here's Knife. Trying to get that easy kill from the off, from the off angle side. And the Kitsune rush is almost done here. As we do have a attempted flip here. Should see a contest come through. You the pulse. Not this time. And uh, pressure. We're gonna have some grass plus knife will find the kill on the Zeus already. That's 45. Matrix has to be up. But without the beat, they really keep this up. Okay, buying some time from the side. And the beat drops after losing two. Tiki Kusakume down already. That is just pressure Kiru on the field. Now, that is not what you want to see if you are a six blow fan, mm. as this is likely just the end of the map. I mean, they have Terra Surge, they have Sound Barrier. Six blow used everything and got nothing. This pressure didn't build his flux in that fight. Knife got hit by the accretion when he was dropping his overclock and just didn't care. He was like, all right, cool cool story. I'm going <laughs> to cool. kill everyone now. Yes, and Liz nice has rock. that big beat. Uh, rock, rock, rock's not going to kill him. And look, he's just uh, sitting on the side. Free damage, full gauge. Looking for the next target. 89%. Tiki Q down. And he'll continue. There's a Terra. Not isolation. And the beat just comes down just for extra safety from Blizz. And that should be 100 to 0 with pressure. The last one on the point. Pulse just for fashion. <laughs> the pulse misses because he dies to the railgun before it connects. <laughs> He's like. He's dead in so many ways, he just doesn't even know. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys straight up, straightforward. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit disappointed that we didn't see a match there from Pressure because I think he's a really good Arisa player. I think absolutely their comp can work. Arisa versus Arisa. Tried to run the Sigma, got outclassed, got out-rotated, got out-positioned by Viper. It feels like in mm -hmm. two ways, they both weren't willing to match, weren't willing to, to play the more meta composition. And then maybe just didn't even do the proper research on how um, Yeti plays. Because if you play Sigma, you're always going to get out-rotated by Viper's Tracer. Like, he's one of the best Tracers in OWCS Korea. At least top three, I would say. And one of the most impactful players on his team. Um, and some people are saying he was the best player all tournament long. You know, I'm not going to name any co-streamers or anything like that. But, mm -hmm. you know, he's had, a, he's had a pretty good season, right? And um, I would rather see a little bit more of a true mirror or a you know real fight of i can match what you're doing like i could basically six blow saying i can be as good at you mm. at what you're good at because what we saw there unfortunately it was just an outclassing of compositions and then better coordination and even like the small minute thing like oh sakume sakume can't rotate as fast he, he died you know stuff like that yeah i just got caught going upstairs and then that was one of those moments, unfortunate moments, as they it seemed like they had okay position, but especially if you're playing uh, Cassidy Sigma, you really have to win that first fight to drag the defense, to buy a lot more time with the first capture. But you're fighting against Yeti, a very a high, highly contested opponent, maybe even stronger than you. Then sometimes you just have to just erase that Sigma. It's like, okay, we're slightly more likely going to lose the first fight, then let's just have a safer or more of more with the speed, the soldier or the Orisa match matchup that you mentioned, or even some Winston if you really have to go dive. So that wasn't tried at all. I was expecting to see some type of team uh, comps, comp changes co coming through, but of, of course it was 100 to 0, 100 to 0 basically, so maybe they didn't really have that much time to pull through. And, and like, when you're playing against a team that's stronger than you, and mm -hmm. you, you come in with that read, sometimes the answer in terms of composition is to play what you're best at or what you like the most and just say well forget the meta let's at least do something that we really enjoy playing that we feel really confident and comfortable with because if we try to match and we're not as prepared for it then you know we just get smashed and it's almost an embarrassing loss right but i feel like they can play they and, and did play yes, exactly did. what yeti played so on the paul specifically so i just think uh, that was a little bit of a disappointing start for me. Like I came into this series thinking, yes, Yeti will probably take it, and it'll mm -hmm. likely be a 3-0. But I didn't think Six will put up a fight, right? And I think Pressure puts up a fight. That's yeah. That was my read going into this one. And so far, if he's going to play Sigma, there's no fight. <laughs> I think it was either two. Uh, uh, one, maybe this is the comp they practiced the most from Nepal, and or Nepal was not, just not the map that they practiced the most within the last week or so. I think it's just either one of the two. Or... 
or I can't really think of anything else at the moment as that was no change in comms. The Cassidy not really doing too much as you do have some work if you, especially when we go into like Esperanza when you have that those like mini uh, high ground control, then sometimes you don't even need uh, need the Sigma. Cassidy can actually survive with some Baptiste uh, with the field if it's possible, but right there on the pal, you can be trapped so easily. So I was also questioning that Cassidy pick, but that must have been some TQQ decision today. Yeah, if you want to play Cassidy, you got to break the tank. Because if you're trying to beat the Sojourn mm -hmm. with Cassidy, then just play Sojourn if you want to beat the Sojourn. And I felt like on the on Sanctum, he was he was trying to beat the Sojourn. And it was working actually a little bit. I was like, oh, man, is he kill Knife there? He, he got that one big headshot on the Knife, and I was like, okay, one more body shot, and hold on. Like, maybe they open this up, but he wasn't able to do it. Mm -hmm. They ended up getting broken down because unlike... Uh, Sigma, Orisa can basically left click and shoot towards you forever, and yes. that's and a problem. Yeah, I could see, I uh, could see what they're trying to do. Of course, with Kiriko, uh, with the consumer rush, Cassidy just pops the output, the DPS that you can get with the rush. It's kind of insane how much damage you can do. But uh, the by the time they were getting close to rush, it was about like sixty five percent to zero. So maybe they really have to change up the mindset of how they want to have this delivered because. Uh, of course, we won't have control again, but uh, similarly in Flashpoint or other maps that we have hybrid. So let's see where we go because uh, at this moment, I would personally not force <laughs> not force your own into another Sigma map like uh, Midtown if that is going to be the next map at all. Yeah, I don't know where we're headed. Um, yeah, it's Explos choice. It's been a little while. So they should have been able to pick a map by now. I hope we don't have any technical difficulties. I will go and check the technical difficulties mm -hmm. center on my mobile phone. No updates yet directly on the... And also maybe no substitutions yet Okay. Uh, for both. There's a chance that Max comes in. So I just got the update that we have the map decided and no substitutions. Okay. I won't tell you guys what the map is, though. It's a secret. Okay, I actually did not see the map, so... I'm going to keep it a secret until it, until we have the, like, little... You know, it's going to be like, map one was Nepal, and then it's going to say, Yeti win, and then it's going to go, whoosh, and it's going to be like, the map is... And we're going to be like, wow, so they're taking us to... And then, oh, you're crossing the line. If you cross too far... Oh, my God. <laughs> you... You broke the fourth wall. Whoa! No, whoa. we're not supposed to go that far. Only up, only up to. What happens if I do yeah. it in my face? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> you broke the fourth wall. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's wild. I've never. Whoa. Mm hmm. I think it's because. Uh, I don't even know why it's like that. I think it's because they tried to cut the, this. Uh, ah. The, some space in the middle. So technically, we're bending the space. <laughs> All right, so it, it we're happened. putting the space together, I guess. It happened, Gclef. It did the whoosh. Shambali. And it's not Shambali oh. today. It's actually, in fact, Shambali. I will correct the graphics oh. team on this oh, one. Oh yeah, that's right. It's not <laughs> Sam. But it's escort. They're taking us to right away, and it's a really interesting call here coming out from Six Blow. Because I think that this is one of the best places you could run the Cassidy, but it's also a great place if you wanted to run a May composition. Mm. Reinhardt? Yes, you can just, from the beginning, you can just keep that wall. I wonder what their plan is going to be. Um, I would love to see May out of them because that's another way to be like, well, the other team is better than me. They have better aim. Their DPSs are better. What if we just play May? That kind of brings the ceiling down a little bit. Well, the May, I think that's there's a real choice, a uh, real possibility. But Pressure, did he ever play Reinhardt? No, not yet. We'll see what happens as we get into Shambali as our second map. Six blue chose this map. Let's see what happens here. Oh, he's hovering it. Don't hack his. But it's not real. It's defense. Well, it could be real, but I don't think so. Yeah, Not it could be real because he is actually defending. Yeah, I was Not thinking. Attacking. Yeah, I was thinking like, oh no, it's attack, so it can't be real. I'm like, wait, no, it's defense. And it's actually the other way. It and actually, it, yeah, Reinhardt Symmetra. But they will not fully is, be right next to the gate. They will just take the high ground. So six blow. Once they see this, they'll probably see if they, will, they can win a team fight here with this sojourn, and then will most likely swap. 
because this is pretty tough to play into with a comp that they're running. Now, the Arisa is not bad. This part, this time, I'm like, all right, pressure. Why did you play us on the ball? Uh, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I digress. Cheek club. Stop raging. Cool. <laughs> I love pressure. Oh, he's my error. boy. Okay. okay so, never mind. Just... Oh, so that's one way Taking to get past the a Reinhardt shield, but I don't know about that. Yes, and Yeti with the slow rotation, they will use the teleport to go back and forth. Ooh, the Fortify is going to buy you some space, but right into the Symmetra turrets, pressure is dead. Okay, lived somehow. Mm -hmm. TQQ super low, and here's Knight trying to show how Cassidy's done. That was really good healing from Sakame. That's actually to get them most of a rush. That was uh, ended up being almost really bad, but it turns out to be pretty good. Uh, push from the right now, teleport's gone. Still enough to tap Knight, get the kill, Viper on the back, pressure down. And once Symmetra stuck on the tank, uh, just delivers so much damage. And you need to you need someone else to cover you. Now this wasn't the worst case scenario for Six Blow. They will have that Kitsune rush pretty soon here. They've also got Dukes on the flank. If he can actually get in there and focus down Bliss, this fight becomes so easy to play out. Yeah, sixty three percent on the pulse. Like this is such a really aggressive angle he's taking, but it absolutely can work out if he's not spotted. Okay, he is spotted, sadly for him. That's the end of that play, but they're just trying to get this Kitsune rush. That is the MO, that's the main plan here. Yes, Teleporter is taken out. That's a good angle. Here comes the rush. And that's what they wanted here. With the Deadeye knife holding the angle. Field is gone now, so there's a chance for this pulse. If they can be landed, and some more kills coming through though. Pressure with the Terra. But Tongak is here, and he's, he's delivering a lot more with the crush. We just hide the shatters. Nobody can ever see Reinhardt shatters anymore. We don't allow it. It breaks monitors. Um, yeah, we just can't show that on screen. Don't look directly at the Eclipse. Don't look directly at that shatter. Don't look at those googly eyes. Um, <laughs> all right, so Dunhawk actually ends up saving the play with the shatter that they don't have to mm -hmm. use Sound Barrier. And so they neutralize the rush push. And it was started off so well for Six Blow, but ultimately the Immortality Field was really well placed. And now they have the Photon Barrier. As man, TQQ is struggling. Oh man, Viper doesn't even need that photon. Oh, doesn't even need a charged up left click, apparently. Dongok even just got one little Dukes. Must have just used that link to get hit by that flame. Yeah. Now they're just gatekeeping right after, right next to the spawn. About a minute left for his explode to actually push. Yeti yeah, said, we'll respect you on the first map, but it's Reinhardt time. I'm gonna pick Shambali. Here we go, look at this overclock angle. This has to be the chance. Ooh, the turret. And the photon right. Right next to the And the, the wall. pulse connects to Donghak, but he just doesn't care. He just rides it out. Do not mind, do not care. Easy peasy. Oh man, some big moments coming out from Yeti and Irony. Just feeling comfortable, staying on the back just in case. Did I teleport? Getting anyone this time. There's a rush from Sakume, but TQQ gone. As Dongak is just right next to that door. No one will not to come out. There's Dukes on the side. Maybe he can change things. That's the recall. Out here is pressure now with the push. Trying to have the attention away. But the payload actually pushed all the way back. Yeah. Not from the corner. I mean, he's going to have to have a big Terra Surge. Let's see what he can get. Oh, good push from Blizz. He knew that the Terra Surge was coming, and that's not going to work. Shatter angle. Down! Oh! There we go! Cover your eyes! Yeah, that should be that. Well, we don't really talk about full holds for Escort, but this was one This was one of them. Like, this was as full as it gets. Like, 26 meters might as well be zero. Um, if Yeti kill one player they win the map and and if like i don't know what happened there but that's okay we, we don't show the shatters like the shatter I said. broke uh yeah broke, that's broke why the machines. Yeah, that's why you don't show the shatters but I uh know. you've got to see it if if yeti like touch the cart breathe on it sneeze on it mm -hmm. six blow loose basically so they have to play super far up they better be planning on running like a reinhardt may if i see anything else i'm worried Okay, Ramatra is also fine. Ramatra is also fine. Ramatra May, strong composition that could kind of hunker down on the point. Yep. I, I'm totally okay with this. Mm -hmm. Immortality field. 
Uh, maybe maybe actually just run the, the Moira instead. I feel like if you go Moira, you go even more all in on this. You have a better chance. As Dohawk might actually, like, unironically look for one hook. Because, like I said, if you kill one person, you probably win the map. Like, look at how little that distance is oh, that you need thought, to push. Yeah, Dohawk always does this uh, hawk, hawk thing. I know. To begin with. But he might actually go for it. Oh. You're oh, used to Nozzle. Nozzle. Brothers, shut You're up. used to know Nozzle. Okay, wait, Japan, hold on. Right? Knife, swap over, swap over, swap over to Echo. Viper, give me that, that Hanzo. No. No, no. He's going to look for the one hook. But Dohawk will come out. With yep. Night Fever. Yeah, he looks for the one hook and then he's like, all right, well, that's that. Maybe. But with the May Ramatra, uh, you do need a lot of it. A lot of damage output from TQ. This is the hook again. Uh oh, pressure. Careful, man. Careful. Yeah, sometimes there are moments where you lack damage with, uh, with this composition. Oh, that's pressure almost dead. Saved by the field. Back up with TQ. Full health. I don't think he cares about the hook that no, much, but, but are... <laughs> I think he cares about the rest of the DPS line more. And that is the first fight won by Yeti. <laughs> They're waiting for the ice block. No one on the payload. Well, it was a good run. It was a good run, Shambali Monster, wasn't it, G-Club? We're moving the far away rate coin? up, aren't we? One more coin? Nope. And no it was a good run. Oh, yeah, that's it. It was With a good run, G-Club. Very, uh... Very extended map of Shambali. I, you know, I thought like it would never end. I was like, wow, this is a really long one. Um, no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm teasing. But we have that full of a hold on escort. Mm -hmm. It yeah, is Dunlop one just, team fight. Dunlop just passed <laughs> and went all the way, and didn't even care about about so the payload. So if oh, you wow. guys don't know, Dunlop played a lot of Roadhog very early on in his mm -hmm. career. He was long a very good time ago. Though, yeah, he was right? a very good Roadhog player in Overwatch One, and he was very well known for Roadhog. So he likes to hover it because he's a legend. But this time, he did more than hover. This time, he pulled it out, and his DPS is carried, and he won the map. Oh, man. Roadhog <laughs> win rate, 100% in wild cards. There you go. And it might just stay 100%. <laughs> and does it count if you only play Fire before? Fire win rate, 100%, G-Club. Does it count if you only play less than a minute of that hero? Um, like there should be a minimum, right? So in Overwatch League, when we had stats, mm -hmm. you had to have played a certain minimum. I think it was like five minutes. Five minutes on yeah. the map, at least? Yeah. So okay. I... I don't know what it was. So it I don't can't remember. just be like Doomfist Touch. Yeah, that, didn't, that's not going to count. In Overwatch League stats, it didn't count unless you play a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, we weren't going to give like people, like when, when you could play Widowmaker as a support, like a support player like flying up for one pot shot, we're like, well, what's his Widowmaker stats? Like, you know, we you had to play a certain amount to hit the threshold to then be counted. Um, they did not hit the threshold. That map ended really fast. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, before, before the, uh, roll, uh, the roll lock into 2-2-2. Two, two, two. You know, g -Clef, coming into today, I talked to you about the upcoming match, I was like, you know what? I think this one could be interesting, the first one. I think it might be the best match of the day. Hmm. And you were like, no, it's going to be one side. And I was like, come on, g -Clef. Pressure, though. He's really good. Yes, but uh, Pressure is not playing the same. I was wrong, g -Clef. Not playing the same as Dongog is just <laughs> I should have trusted you. I should have trusted you. <laughs> well, we'll have more talk because we'll have some time for the break. And when we come back, let's see that. Map number three.
Welcome back, everyone. We are in the middle of Yeti versus Six Flow, and man, it's it's the most one-sided game I've ever seen so far this season, this entire season, basically. Yeah, like Namakuji Brothers put up a better fight. Um, yeah, they also have they've also got some crazy colors. Nyam Gaming put up a better fight. Uh, against Maybe not Nyam. <laughs> Six Flow. <laughs> Six Flow. They just don't look like the Six Flow that we have been casting for the last weeks. Well, I mean, mm. the composition with the Reinhardt was pretty smart. Mm. It worked out really well. Um, according to the detectives on Reddit, I think Knife and Donghak still haven't died yet at all this series. Across Through two, two maps? Two maps, two rounds of control. Um, and Chabali. Oh, man. So the Reddit detectives are on it. I've, I have seen, <laughs> I have seen their messages. Uh, I don't know, Jigglef. I really thought that this was going to be interesting. Like, I, I actually... I feel foolish. Like, I, I came into the thing and, like, this one goes to four maps, maybe. Like, if any of them go to four, it's probably mm -hmm. this one. Um, now, obviously, 3-2-1 against Six Bull later on could be interesting as well, but if Yeti are this dominant, it may just not matter. Coliseo is going to be our map pick for push. And... What do you... I mean... I, think I hate to do this, now, but I'm like, uh -huh. right now, I'm like, do they finish the map with five minutes plus? <laughs> I think they might. I think, though, we really have to talk about, uh, like, how many minutes of plus and minus that Yeti finishes, first of all. Yeah. And 
Maybe no, I mean six then, blow, man. They do six minute plus. <laughs> and then I think now we have some chances to see more Genji uh, from uh, e either side, maybe both even, because there has there has been some moments and very quiet from especially Dukes, who's usually a better tracer than today. I think either he had some some moments in Champali, but just not enough because the team was just getting stumbled upon so much. And TQQ, I want to see him play Sojourn. I want to see if he can match against Knight. I mean, uh, you know, show us your best. I know he, he loves to play the Cassidy, but we're just going to have a big problem if you're trying to face off against one of our better Sojourns here in Knife. Mm -hmm. We'll see if Yeti close us out with Colosio. With a 3-0. Oh, Max is in. A substitution. Okay. okay. That's quite rare. I mean, again, Put this in perspective. Pressure was for a really long time our Maybe best tank pressure player. Pressure doesn't like feel good today, like physically or something. It could be. Sometimes you just have you can catch a cold. Of course. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. I mean, pressure also certainly season. doesn't uh, feel the same to me. So changing into Max, who usually doesn't play this much Orisa. Okay, Dukes ate a right click from. Dongak Dong is on hold. Yeah, that's what I'm telling you, man. He's he's hogging it up. Um, and he did right click right into Dukes. Oh, now Sakame is down. Hooked by Donghak. Must have been, that's not the position. Another There's a second. Almost, but not quite as Viper is on the chase, I believe, for the kill. There we go. That will be the second. This time does not go, but Viper is on the point. And he's just chasing down for more Donghak. Not being pressured as if they're contesting for more kills. This is rough, G Cliff. Who was it? Did you, you said never went down Viper and uh, Iron? Uh, knife and Donghak. Knife and Donghak? Yeah. <laughs> That's so, why he's on Hog. He wants to self heal himself. Yeah, he is. Uh, when you're winning every team fight, he's pretty sturdy. Um, and he's winning the team fights by hooking people. The leader. And here's Max with on Ovisa. And the robot has been pushing slowly. Uh, I'm guessing that is Irony or Blizz. It's always one of the supports. Yeah. They actually have two on the cart right now. Here's the pressure onto the Hulk. He just runs away. He's like, cool, you guys got high ground, but I don't care. As TQQ is this time on the Sojourn, but see if he can find line of sight. He is struggling at the moment. The protest. And some good diversion into the side and the Hulk. Yeah, really. Still staying alive. Oh, Pulse. Pulse. Viper. Max eats it up, and that didn't do enough damage, but Donghak is here to finish. Not just Max, also TQQ, and some whole hog time. I don't even know if he needed the whole hog here, but he's going to go ahead and take him out. Um, the rare trap kill onto an Orisa as well was uh, something that I saw in the kill feed. As Donghak is popping off. Um, you know, I did say five, six minutes. We're, uh, we're on track at the moment as they didn't commit ultimates. So that's the critical thing here for Six Blow. Mm -hmm. They did not toss out the Terra Surge there. They had an opportunity to, but they just thought such, uh, the setup wasn't good enough. It's so Max Maze is getting pushed down. And this is without an enemy yeah, he's Arisa. He's getting bullied, man. Like, he, he, this is like, there's no enemy Arisa. Dongok is not even shooting at him. He's getting killed by railguns here from Knife. He's getting killed by Tracer damage. Look, Dukes and TQ, look at, the, look at their HP bars. They, they can't are, help. They, they still have to get healing, so it's not just Max who has to get heals. Here's the rush, and six, and six below, they, they're saying, we can't just lose this. But even through the beat, TQQ Dukes. Oh man, I don't think they're fully caught in that uh, sound barrier. That's just, the tempo from Yeti is just a little too fast for Six below to handle at the moment. Overclock on, knife. Still looking for target. I don't actually know if he was looking for target or not. So put me down, and they will continue to deliver. Viper knife. Shooting at whatever target they see. Kiru. And that's a railgun. Another click. I wouldn't challenge those DPS players if I were you, Kiru. <laughs> that's probably not that's probably not what you want. Um, this may be the end of the series. Uh right here. Um 640. As, okay. Overclock Zenyatta. Maybe a little too late, but we'll be helping some more damage if you really need it. Maybe this on Doma. Is, he's just he's just pushing it in. You. They're getting close. This angle for Donghawk is actually so annoying. He's just chipping away at the Orisa armor while also threatening hooks onto the back line. If any tracer comes over here to try to, to push him back, he just hooks Dukes and says, I don't care. Okay, the final push. Unless there's an entire team wide, but you can't really go all the way. So Yeti also finds some time. Uh, Viper now does have the pulse. Thank you. 
the right place. And there's the first kill, Zenyatta down and overclock. TKQ has to show up big time, the pulse. Not on him this time. He's surviving. As with the rush, let's see if they can pull out any more kills. There's a whole hog. Viper dead, but whole hog is doing so much more from Dong Hog on the other side. That's a third. And potentially more. And knife to the strongest shot will get a kill. There's a hook. And the entire team fight. And this robot is going to finish. 530? 531. 531. I you know we said between five and six. We were exactly on the money. It was like about exactly between five and six minutes. Yeti crushed this series, G Club. Uh, this is the fastest series of Overwatch I think I've ever commentated. Uh, me, me too. I <laughs> I, I kind of lost my words um, in the second map where I was like, all right, well, this just isn't going to be competitive. Like, it just isn't. Um, and Yeti, they came off a crushing defeat yesterday to FTG in that final matchup. Right? They got 3 0 wasn't close. They mm -hmm. couldn't compete. You know, I really thought that series was going to be very interesting. It was not. Um, they got knocked down to wild cards here. They show up in this first series making arguably the best tank player. Like, I really think Pressure, most consistent tank player in OWCS Japan. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen, you know, some some other tanks rise to the occasion. There's been some really big pop-up performances. Veril have had some their moments as well. But Pressure just looked invisible. And because the DPS line was losing so hard, heals had to be going everywhere. Pressure was losing... As Orisa versus Hog, like as Orisa, you have a massive amount of armor, you have Fortify, you're very tanky in general, and you do more consistent damage output than the Roadhog. And he was actually like going down to, to sub 30%, sub 20% health in those fights. And sometimes without the Roadhog even shooting at him. It was incredible. And the player of the match will be Dong Hawk. And we'd love to see some more hook time, not just nozzle. And it'll be. <laughs> Our second time seeing that Roadhog on the player of the match, starting from Nepal. Knife was robbed, yeah. G Club. Big Terra. Uh, he and Knife both deathless, I think, in the end. Um, yes, I think. I don't think Dongok died. Viper fell once, not Knife. Yeah. The uh, I think Knife was robbed though. Like Dongok had a pretty good performance. He did play Roadhog, which was very fun. But a lot of this, to me, was Knife popping off and getting right-click kills um, onto people. And there's so many railgun shots connecting. Uh, Come on, what about the shatters? All right. Well, that's not the most impressive. So <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I wanted to see the one before. I guess they didn't really have that captured. Yeah. Fully. Oh, that was oh. how Duke's died. That's yeah. so funny. <laughs> oh, he got charged. I, I think both of them are fine picks. I think it's, okay. it, you know, Ryan or or Sojourn here, or, or, or Roadhog, whatever. But I mean, of course, don't hack for Knife. And in the third map, he did kind of pop off really hard, so, you know, I think it's fair. But I do think Knife deserves a lot of credit. And or he was wrong. <laughs> this triple <laughs> kill here as well was just so silly. Mm -hmm. And a great finish for well, Dong Hawk. That's going to be a confidence booster going into... They will have one break now. So, six blow, uh, every team plays two games. Mm -hmm. They play the other two teams, right? And they play next. Like, they play Immediately next. right after this into 3-2-1 dive. So... There's going to be about a 15, 20 minute break for them. You know, obviously, there's like it's going to be a 15 minute break for you guys. You're going to have to wait at home. Um, but they'll have like some time before that break. So they're, they're resting right now. They'll have a little bit of time after that to get ready to get in their seats and get ready to play the game. But recovering from that that loss against a pretty strong team in 3 2 1 dive might be rough. But hey, we could also see a big bounce back here. Yeah, it's it's a different region, technically. Different region team. And I knew there was uh, some uh, noticeable gap between, between Korea and Japan, but. Still, this was actually still a surprise, even after saying that to you. Fourth seed from Korea versus third seed from Japan. It seemed like there's a huge margin of gap, even more than what we have in between us. Oh, yeah. man. And it seems like Yeti, I, I'm not going to lie, I th think Yeti will be co should be coming out from the wild card today. <laughs> I don't see a big well, surprise. Here's the thing, too. Like, now, if you're, um, if you're six blow, you have uh -huh. to win the next match, right? But then you also have to hope that the team that you just beat after you got crushed then beats Yeti. Because if, if you win the next match, that's not it. Like, they also you, have to beat... That's even then lower they chance. they have to beat Yeti. <laughs> like, 3-2-1 dive also has to beat Yeti for you to go now. No, I think there's higher chance for 3-2-1 diving, actually. <laughs> Potentially becoming the first. I think I don't think 6 below just has it today. Oh, let's see. Because that's coming up next. Let's see what they have got against 3-2-1 diving. Because that will be the same. Uh, first to three. 
We'll see what happens over there.
نیست
And welcome back everyone. This is going to be the second match of the wild card going into OWCDS Asia for that final. One slot, one team will go up to it. It seems like Yeti is very likely to go up there now with that huge win against a very strong team indeed from Six Below. There's quite a gap there. And so the scenario we, mm -hmm. we we laid this scenario out before we went <laughs> put it down again. Okay. Before we went to the break, I told everyone what has to happen for Six Blow to go. So Six Blow were just smashed by Yeti in the most one-sided Overwatch mm -hmm. series, professional Overwatch series I've ever seen. They now have to beat three two one gaming or three two one dive. Um, and if they do, if they do, that puts them on a one one score line. Mm -hmm. And the only way that they could then advance is if also 3 to one Dive beat Yeti. 3-0. But if they... It, it, that's, and that's after losing to the team that Yeti just 3 0 would super hard. So they have to beat 3 to one and then 3 to one has to upset Yeti. So it has to be rock, paper, scissor. And they have to have the better map differential as well. With all, th all three zeros to tie it up for that tie break and win against them again. In that tie break. Yes. That is the only way, right? That is the only way. I mean, it, it, there is a world where they could win without tiebreakers, but that would it's very unlikely considering Yeti 3 0 So I'm telling you guys right now, like, even if Six Blow win this, mm -hmm. chances are grim. It's pretty grim. It's not it's not looking likely. It's mm -hmm. not looking likely. I think there's actually a higher chance for three two one diving. <laughs> than six flow by now because that was a hard three zero. Well, defeat. the other thing is like for three two one diving, you have to. So now you have to beat um, six blow mm -hmm. right, and then you have to beat Yeti, which is possible right if they have a much better performance. Mm -hmm. If they are gonna beat Yeti, then this series in theory could be even more one side than the last one we saw. Uh, now imagine this scenario where okay, six I'm blow listening. three zeros. Three, two, one. Okay. Like in the same way that that they just got three zero so by like Yeti. Ye then Yeti will so be then here. How hard does Yeti beat three two? Six, one? Uh, six below will be like here. How, and three two one diving will be like, whoa. How they, ruined are we in our land tournament if the difference in the regions is this high? Like uh, WCS Asia might be a bit of a wash. G Club might be just the WCS Korea redo. I don't think it's going to be that bad. But, but it's do, not yeah. looking great right now. Yeah, but uh, maybe it's it's just these teams out of the top two, top three from Pacific, Japan, Korea. Because we had those teams not exactly in the same situation with the same roster, but had those teams fighting against each other. Uh, Flash Ops last year and also years before of history. So 3-2-1 diving, they're going to count 3-2-1 and then they're going to dive. They are they are ready to dive. Um, yeah, I was talking they, to you about this. They play a lot of dive. They like to play a little do. bit of Genji. Not all the way, but they do like to test the waters first and then dive. Uh, yeah, like they go three, two, one. one. Yes, they actually do, we actually did that a couple of times. Agree, like two, <laughs> one, dive. <laughs> yeah, that's what they do. Um, six blow really need to pull pull themselves together. That was a rough loss. I think that zero three does not tell the story of what we just witnessed. That was like zero ten, to me. <laughs> well, it felt like it, I don't know. It didn't even feel like we saw three maps. Like it felt like it was a zero zero, and like mm. six blow didn't even show up. It was DQ. Like, uh, and I, I don't want to pile on the six blow and be mean to them or anything because that's that's not my intent. I just want to really characterize what was a brutal and savage three zero. Like. It just, I mean, and Six Bowl are yeah, they a top three, usually top two team in their region. Like, they were yeah, top it, two for most there, of the season. There were moments where Six Bowl was actually having good, um, not against Vero specifically, but it, at least against Insomnia. They were able to challenge them into a couple of maps sometimes. So I think that's the level that we're talking about. Of course, Vero is on top. So you can't say Jap Japan is compared to Korea just overall much weaker teams overall because they do have barrel but except for them i think still a lot of work to to, uh, to be desired for japan now it looks like they're putting pressure back in here for this first map of control in the second series so won't be seeing max uh at least not just yet we'll see if he ends up coming out later on in the series otherwise same roster um no roromia he has uh not played for a while six below have been really sticking with dukes and tqq Roromia was in, I believe, last week for a map. Remember his Genji play? 
Yeah, he hasn't played too much overall. Maybe once a week ish. Yeah. Or once every other week. Especially when he's uh, when the team is winning. And, and when they don't have the map choice, I think he was going into some some of the escorts. I may be wrong on that map choice, but he was certainly playing Genji uh, week before. So maybe we'll get to see him uh, later on. All right, now this roster is it's pretty it's got a pretty robust support line. Um, we don't always see the uh, Spook and Chon Lee, but Sungan is a pretty good tank player. I think this is going to be a really exciting matchup there. The pedals is pretty insane at long range hit scan. So yes. the matchup between yeah. him um, and Knife later on will actually be pretty interesting against TQQ so far. I'm going to have to give Pedals the edge based on what we saw from him today. And Ju, of course, on the Genji, you mentioned the dive that we have seen from him quite a bit. Uh, Meme Machine, he lives up to his name. Oh, he does. <laughs> actually, a lot better than what his uh, meme machine uh, looks like the, in terms of the in terms of the power that the ID gives you, not fully strength. Uh, but your pedals, you can kind of uh, in a reference. It, he's more, much more like Hofak, yeah, of specific. Yeah, I would say that's actually a pretty good reference. He, there's hit, some hit at miss, but if uh, if we're actually hitting the highs, the peak, this guy will pop off crazy. But there are some like total silent maps if there are some really big opponents against him. Yeah, we'll see if that ends up being the case here into Six Blow. As going into today's series, I thought I would give Six Blow a huge edge, and maybe that's still true, but coming off of a loss like we just saw, it is tough to say. We're going to Nepal a second time here. And this is gonna set the tone, G Cliff. I really I really don't want to see another one of those today, but I feel like we're about to see it after this. <laughs> Um, but let's see if we can see a bounce back from Six Blow. Mm -hmm. I want to see these two be able to compete against each other because the ultimate reality is probably neither of these teams are going because of how uh, dominant Yeti is. But at least we get to see them compete in an international tournament that is the wild card mm -hmm. tournament, right? Like this is some international competition between these two, and they get to prove their regions. Yes, as we get things loaded up to Nepal, will be the first map between Six Blow and Three Two One diving. Six Blow, they did. Get punched big time against Yeti. Let's see if they can recover. Starting fresh on this first map. Peaceful Omnix in Nepal. The blue on those flags is a little bit unnatural, wouldn't you say? Mm. <laughs> but um, I I'm more looking at the team comp and Sungan with the Sigma. So 3 2 1 doing a six blow from mm -hmm. the first series cosplay um, where they're running the exact same comp. And then six blow are this time going to be running the Genji. They're going to be running the Orisa. Now, these teams are probably scrimmed against each other in the past. They definitely know each other, have studied against each other because this is the match that you feel is winnable going into wildcard. And Duke's trying to get on top of pedals, I think, is going to be the game plan here for six blow. He's actually going to take the wraparound here with the wall climb. Extra jump. A few pokes from the side as uh, Sigma. That's one of his weakness and exactly why that Kenji is out there. I think he finds that shot on the Roxy's first. One dead, three to one diving. Losing their opportunity. No dive this time as they were dove upon from yeah. the opponent. More like three, two, one, get dove. Oh, know? there's the diving. <laughs> yeah. Diving right into the uh, respawn room as Kira will get kill credit for that one with the right click and will blast his way to half of the sound barrier. As, ooh, you don't oh. want to lose these duels. We'll have the Mega to operate on, won't have to recall, but doesn't feel great as Dukes is half of a blade, and that angle he took ended up being super impactful on their dive into the back line. Pedals didn't get to do a whole lot. Now they're, of course, going to get a little bit spawn camped here, choke point camped. Even worse with Orisa, can he? 8 HP okay, eventually found. If the field will be able to keep things alive, here's an extra push. And Orisa. Oh, there's no escape out of this. Let's see how that goes. There's a boop for the kill. All right, somebody's going to get on this point and flip it. A little bit of a lack of discipline on this one, I, I would say. But me Machine will get in there and get it in the end. They want to help get that kill onto the Orisa. Somebody should have grabbed that a little bit faster. That fight was won a long time ago. But either way, Six Blow going to be feeling pretty good about building this one up to near 50, especially with a late return from 3 2, one And because they're running a dive comp and they have Kitsune Rush, getting through the choke point is much easier for them. In fact, they're already successful in doing so without the rush coming out. Here it comes. Yeah, Kitsune Rush. And 
No blade yet, still 10% away for Dukes. Really nice right click there for Meme Machine. Uh, actually prevents Dukes from getting that last 10% of his ult. If he goes through the whole team there, he can pull his blade on the other mm -hmm. side. It's denied. Early beat with some aggressive movements. Here comes Deadeye. And the counter. Okay, pedals need to find the kill. Sunan with the flux and everything dropped for 3 2 1 diving. And that's what they need is explode. They committed a few, but not all the way. So won't be able to commit this one around. And I know I sound like I'm, I'm really harping on it, but I do think that if Dukes gets that last 10% with the Swiss strike and actually is able to make it through 3 2 1, he's in the exact spot he wants to be when he resets the Swiss strike with the. Uh, Dragon Blade coming out, but he's denied. And then 3 2 1 have the better second sound barrier there. Now they're significantly ahead in terms of capture percentage here. And the immortality field, as you can see, is back up and ready for the blade. Early blade. And with the blade, Tiki you found a kill on the side of the Wolf Tracer. 3 2 1 diving with no ults available. They do have to force themselves back to the choking point. As here's a flip from 6, six Blow. Yeah, and uh, Proxy will drop the Immortality field now. Uh, without the field, though, that has to destroy by TQQ immediately, and Pressure gets a kill with the Terra. Kind of bizarre how late Proxy's dropped that Immortality field, and by the time he tossed it out, obviously there was a Terra Surge on top of their team, and it was focused down. Didn't use it during the Dragon Blade, as they were just kind of bowled over by TQQ. As you mentioned, when the Blade came out, he got that pick, I believe, onto Ju. And. Now, I mean, it's a really tough scenario because they don't have the sound barrier just yet. They do have this pulse bomb. But so Six Juice. will have complete control of the choke. Yeah, that's why Ju is trying to, well, at least try to go rotate. Maybe trying from the other angle could be better by joining the team inside. Here's the rush again to Hume. A trick rush. No big shots coming up from TQQ. That was overly aggressive. Pedal responding back better even without the overclock. And that was actually opportunity made from Six Blow diving onto them. Yeah, you ever try to do something like really... Okay, hold up. That sound barrier is out here for me, Machine. And the counter is Kiru. Six Blow looking this to finish this right now. now with that. Extra beat. And Petals is here with the damage as this guy can always show up. Soldier and Flare. This was a huge flip. flip. There we go. Um, six blow. Like I was gonna say, you ever, you know, in high school, try to do something really cool in front of your crush and end up just like tripping or bumping into a wall. Like I feel like that's that's what I saw from six blow trying to push out super hard, super deep, and then getting completely flanked there by Ju and getting cut to pieces, having to trade sound barriers. They might actually lose the map off of showboating essentially instead of just playing back on the point. Pressure swapping late to the doom fist here, and they have a flux to deny the touch. Pressure breaks through, but he's oh! not able to get on. This reminds me of yesterday. Yeah, well, this was a little bit of a different situation here. Without the poop, but still, that 3 2 1. Diving, getting the first. And Six Blow really crumpled this one up, balled it up, and hit a three point shot right into the bin because they had full control. Yeah, they really did trip. Themselves. And they, they went out of the choke point, they tried to push towards spawn, and they got flanked and outclassed. And it was a team fight win here that they had no right losing. Like, why are we out here? No Dragon Blade, no setup. Six Blow, I think, you know, really feeling the pressure of getting 3 0 earlier on, had so much of an edge and just tossed it all away. 3 to 1 diving will accept the gift. Yes, I understand they were trying to change the team comp. Maybe, but even with that, I think not making the play could have brought the first game, uh, first game at least. But here is the second as 3 to 1 diving. Couldn't really come out yet, so they will be rotating off to the left as it's below, still holding that high ground. And here's TQQ. Dukes finds one. Two down again. First to go. Oh, he's also getting some contested off to the side. It must be the Genji. It's going to be the first flip, first cap early. And TQQ has line of sight here of this choke point. Pedals is going to try to go for a flank. But he shows himself early. That's the end of that. Can still find an angle potentially, but they know where he is. I have been enjoying watching Petals so far this season. See if he can find something. Uh, not quite. Too not, far on his own. Not this time as Kenji had his marked position. 
And here's Dukes again. The problem with flanking like that is if you get seen, or if you don't get the, the kill instantly with your railgun shot, it's over. And now, 3 2 1 diving is going to get staggered here potentially. This time, I will allow the chase from Six Blow. This time, it makes sense. And we'll be able to pick up some additional kills here, some extra sound barrier charge from Kiru. And now, okay, this is where you draw the line. This is where you go back. Yeah, don't chase too far. That bad because there are lots of hiding spots and also easier rotation inside or back to the capture zone at least. But the previous one, I <laughs> I had lots of questions on that. And Petals, looking like he's gathering some ultimate, uh, about 52 from 6 below on the capture. And let's see the rotation. Maybe the middle passage, except for that Sigma. Okay, nice touch here. No oh, Petals down from the rock. And the flux. Not really the greatest flux coming up from pressure, but he feels, still feels safe with that extra, min, extra window. We have heals back. And 3 2 1 diving, or RD with a 2 now. Trying to get Meme Machine into a position here to actually set up for that barrier. He's so close to it. That's what the observers are showcasing. He's 5% away to match Kiru, and he's going to need that barrier to deal with the Dragon Blade and the Overclock. The combo here that Six Bull has. Here's the blade. Barrier first. The beat is good. Dukes he has to watch out his own HP as he falls. But did buy a lot of time for the team. In the air. We'll get the strike. And it does seem like with 99% explode, unless Tiki Q just gets 4k by himself. Well? Oh, that's a second. Not all the way. Mimo, she's still there. That will be the flip and 3 2 one diving. They have a few seconds now to collect. I think Kiru should have held the sound barrier a lot longer than he did there, reacting to Meme Machine's sound barrier, but that's what your Dragon Blade forces, and it affords you the ability to sound barrier later and actually wait until their sound barrier is expired to then just crush the follow-up fight. He sound barriered super quickly during the blade to try to empower it, but it did not work. And I mean, now it's anyone's game to take a swing on and swapped over to Doomfist here to try to deal with the Genji. I actually think it's a great swap. This ends now. To the overclock here from Petals. Already got the Lucio second goes to Sakume. And they just had to force themselves off of the field. If you stayed in there, you were dying regardless. Yeah, pressure down here. Dukes on a Cherry Blossom play. That's not Cherry Blossom. I don't know what that is. Cherry Blossom season, so I'm, I've got it on the mind, but. Um, it's Nepal, <laughs> so I don't know what that is, but uh, a little a frosty plant <laughs> flank <laughs> angle. Um, bring back Hanamura, please. So, no. <laughs> I think 2CP was okay, hey, G-Clef. Controversial have, statement, but I thought it was all right. I just bear the push, but... We can have that talk later, okay? <laughs> all right, pressure is going to have a flux here with just one more left click. Metal's low. We will slide away, slowly. I think you will still find him. I think uh, with the extra ultimates that they had, it's like the flip is coming. 3 on diving, they actually got 80%. As they have to fight, it's now or never. They do have one on the map before. Here's Sunat with the block, but low HP. As here's Su trying to do what he can, but I think it's over time and six blows should have this. There's a flux to finish, grabbing pedals. Down he will go when the flux completes. And that's the end of that. Six blow bringing us to a third round. A lot cleaner this time around. Um, you know, if I had to nitpick, I thought pressure, we had his first person view a few times. Kind of struggling for, in the target selection department. <laughs> there were a few times where he had like three people who could kill and he's like, he couldn't choose when they were winning the fight. But I guess when you're winning the fight that hard, it doesn't necessarily matter. As Pedals had a pretty good uh, second round here, but ultimately was taken out there. As I think the neutral fight did not go their way once the Doomfist swap came through because they weren't able to successfully get any punches into the walls. The the Genji was safe. Mm -hmm. And let's see what we're running here on this third one. Looks like a Cassidy Mirror, which is actually kind of confusing to be considering this is one of the better points for Sojourn. And Dukes is on the Echo. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Likely with the first, first, uh, Capture off to the side from Six Below. Here, you can have the rotation from Duke to catch not just the Tracer, also for some uh, pressure onto Sigma Sigma. I think is the idea here as we see Petals. On Cassie, let's see his aim as one of the better hit scans from Pacific. Damage off to the side. 
That's for the capture. No full capture yet from either. TQQ operating around this wall. Pushed on here. Immortality field down. This looks really good for 3 2 1. Looks like they have actually just smashed it. TQQ trying to use his Echo to get out of here. Not gonna happen. Only Dukes will survive this one. And now 3 2 1 have control of this point. Deadeye is gonna make this really tough for Dukes to actually continue to, uh, to pressure. Like, he wants to come over here and try to harass, but so much healing onto Dukes. Let's see what he can, or rather, onto uh, Petals. Let's see what Dukes can find. As he knows the Deadeye is ready, he's got to. But you do need some cover. There's the Deadeye already. He's done a Sigma, I think he actually blocked. Drop four Petals. Great barrier timing. Stump away, here's Dukes, but inside, making it easy to target to catch. Heal's coming through like crazy on the pedals here from Proxies, and he is going to live through all of that. Stick. It's good from Jew. Massive stick, even though it's not a multi-kill, the AoE damage from the Pulse Bomb actually hits three there. And they're able to clean up Kiro before he has the sound barrier. And 3-2-1 looking most dominant here on this third round. Yeah, 62, but in terms of ultimates, Meme Machine, who has been ha having really good beats so far, will have, have to have one of the better beats because there's almost five bolts coming from Six Blow. All right, Deadeye angle here for TQQ, potentially. But it is so tough into this Tracer. Sign Even with the beat, 3-2-1 diving, having a good time with pedals. Get that hit! Final few seconds. Here's Sinan firing back without the Lucio and without the beats. Ideal scenario for 3 2 is more ults get used and they save theirs. They end up saving the sound barrier here. They didn't get to 99, but 82 is still high enough. As we do have a little bit of a staggered death here on the Jew, that's not going to be too impactful. Because all 3 2 1 diving really need to do here now is to win with the sound barrier. And this is gonna be a fight that Pedals could just kind of walk towards pressure, not care about Flux, just barrier up and blow up the tank. And I think that Dukes is gonna be the one who has to save Six Blow here. Like his duplicate has to get insane value. And honestly, he might just have to duplicate the Tracer in order to make that happen. If he tries to duplicate Sungan, I don't know if that's really gonna be enough. See how much he can pull out with the Duke. Pedal. Slowly with the dead eye, taking too much damage, saved by the beat. It will catch Gume off the side. Okay, but a bit of a fire back from PKQ and Dukes with the beast. Yeah, that is some extra cover for Six Blow. Really well managed as they have taken some hit from Petals before. Proxy is still alive here. It's very awkward for 3 2 1. They either need to win this fight or reset. They're losing a ton of time off of this. And more than Dukes' duplicate, it was really just overall the damage coming out from pressure there, and TQQ pops off in a big way. Even the pedals are sitting up in the air, he got that kill with the Deadeye, he's like, thank you for extra line of sight. Wasn't ultimately able to get a ton done there. It and was the also the Pulse Bomb dropped. Yeah. And 3-2-1 now in a very awkward spot here without ultimates. Ult economy usage here for both of their teams a little bit lacking in the second series. You know, that I think he just walks down and gets to be stunned, and that will be gone. Well managed by Sengan there. Uh, forces off the immortality field. There's Petals. And he fires back a little bit, blocks right in the middle. Catch one more. One diving with just the flux and some more pressure. Able to get this split, split back. It is 99%, so we're talking about one last team fight now. Yeah, I don't even know if they get the fight. Someone's gonna have to swap the tracer. That's pressure back hiding. onto the fist. TQQ to tracer. Kiru gonna have to go for the touch. Oh, boop. Boop. Still gets in. But he dies for it. And no beat available for six below. And oh, oh not just that. More members falling. And that's not pedals. And that's what we have, Wolf. 3 to 1 diving in the lead. 3 to 1, 2 to 1 on the first map of control. Mm -hmm. And so I think with losing, after losing that map, Six Blow is almost 100% out. Let me think. From escaping. I, I, 
Unless I'm wrong, because no, I, no, I think you might be onto something. So like mm -hmm. because right they, now, they had minus, they had, it's minus four already. So right now they're so minus three. I don't three. think they cannot get first. The best place. they can get is plus two. Mm -hmm. So the best score line they can have is minus one. So if uh, and Yeti already has plus three. Yeti already has plus three, mm -hmm. and if Yeti get three zero, they go to zero. So yeah, they're out. Six blows out. It's just three two one, and Yeti now. Now, if 3-2-1 end up winning uh, this series with a 3-0, then... Then still there is a possibility. Actually, to be honest, now it doesn't matter what uh, what scoreline they win with because no, it's if they beat Yeti, then they, yeah. just, they just have the 2-0 and they win. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as 3-2-1 as as Diving wins this match and the next match because it's head-to-head -head first and then... Oh, match wins head-to-head -head, and then the map differential. So we'll see how that goes because that 3 2 1, I think there was still some chances for Six Blue, especially the first round. There was certainly a lot more chance uh, for them to come back. I think that was a big throw. Yeah, they really, they really dropped the ball. Really underestimating what pedals can do. Yeah, I, I, Six Blue maybe just playing under some extra nerves. They have some extra pressure because it is such an important match. And they already lost their chances. They got ups upset by Insomnia and then. They ended up not making finals, not making top two, not mm -hmm. getting that spot. Now I have to play through wild card. Got crushed by Yeti. Were winning and then ultimately failed uh, against Yeti. And if they realize, as you very quickly did, that they can't actually qualify anymore, I do wonder what they'll do. What they I will do actually wonder what play. they will play. <laughs> they'll probably Guzzi just they'll brothers. probably just be respectful and play serious uh, comps, uh -huh. but they might not. <laughs> they might not. It, I think it all depends. If they also did the calculations, but uh, oftentimes from the players, there are very, very few players to actually calculate all that, unless we're talking like uh, another esports where if you do more kills with more points. But especially in Overwatch, you just go like, huh, it was a loss, but maybe we still have chance. And then they just play, play fully until the end because this is still a practice going to the second stage. So just to explain one more time for those who are wondering why we're saying that Six Blow is mm -hmm. out already, they got 3 0 so their scoreline is now negative 3, right? So they're minus 3. If they win um, the next three maps, the best possible from score this from this match, they will only be able to get a plus, plus two, 2 score line. So they will be at negative 1. And if Yeti gets 3 0 they'll be at 0, yes. which is higher than negative 1. Yes, still higher than negative 1 from 6 blows. So Yeti will, even if they lose, they will still. Yeah, be then on they would top all, of six below. Yes. They would all be one and one, but mm -hmm. Yeti would at least already be, regardless of what happens, best worst case scenario for six below at zero, and so that would be above negative one, so they're eliminated. Yeah, that's the calculation for six below. Now, three to one diving, they just have to win two matches. Yeah, they have to win both the series, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what score line, and they are, they're going to be the ones that go to the OWCS Asia. Hmm. Oh, so... Unless I'm unless I'm like crazy here, I think I think you I th are correct. I think we I think we got the no, map. I, th now. I think we did it. Yeah, three teams, uh, first to three at this level of numbers. I think we can handle it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is there are like five teams, eight teams, nine teams to think about. No, no, not even going to try. But I think we've had some experience on this th this type of wild card. Yeah. And I think we can do some easy math here. So I'm gonna see if I can get an update as to. Oh, the thingy went away. So might be Are oh, the maps? Oh the what, six blow choice. Yeah, six blows choice. Are we going to Shambali again? Okay, I know where we're going. I hope not. Because not Shambali. I don't think they want to repeat what just happened in the previous series. It's not Shambali, mm -hmm. but it may be uh, I think we have the map. It's a map that you're familiar with. It's Coliseo again. So oh. I oh, why push? That's what I am wondering. I don't mind this so is, much. Is Max in again? They've been a pretty. They've been pretty good. I don't think so, actually. No subs. So they've been pretty good on push in OWCS Japan. But maybe they just think three, two, one diving is not going to do as well when they lose high ground. Like maybe this is a map type where they think they win those first two team fights and then Pedal can't get high ground and TQQ actually gets to control the matchup. Or maybe they just really like Colosseo. I, I, you know, it, 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 again, it doesn't necessarily matter, like, what their thought process is, but I just really want to play what they enjoy because they're eliminated already. But we'll see what they've got for us in store. Yes. Yeah, with the tough stab, I believe the second game is ready to explode. Hard defeat and also losing the first control. 
Let's see if 3 to one Diving can go into that big two, or we will have a tight series on this Colosseo. The chances are still there for 3 to one Yep, the heroes here come out. More of the same, Ju staying on the Tracer. So kind of uh, a match of the Echo again here for Dukes. Or not a match, but like it's sticking with it, that is to say. Yeah, for 3 to one it's mostly this comp in many different maps. But some, some of those Winston's Plus uh, pedal when they go dive a little further with Kiriko. See if 3 2 1 diving can win this first fight. Would be huge for them. Those pedals. Hiding. That gauge burning way. As you can't find any extra target. Look, we'll be looking for that echo if he can get an angle. TQQ, speaking of, does not push. have a great angle. And has to slide away. As that barrier, I think, was getting destroyed early. Okay, Pedals also str struggling to find one. It's one of those long Colosseo fights. You know, I'm talking about Jacob's seen a few of these this, uh, this season, this year. Yeah, the neutral sometimes. The neutral gets wacky because you don't have great line of sight. You can put somebody at half and then you're like, all right, I need to back away. And because it's not Tracer versus Tracer, off to the side. Yeah. It's basically 5v5. Dukes. Dukes, 1 HP. Oh, Ju actually goes down. Pressure finds the target. Tracer down. And Dukes will be having a lot more angle. Open up the side. Pedal just slides back. Here's a bit of a push. From 6 Glow. Four ultimates. Uh, first will be the Flux. And then two more. With that smash. Okay, so 6 Glow end up winning the first fight here. And they will have high ground control if they win this fight, which they likely will. Considering the delayed kill here on the Jew and the lack of sound barrier here for 3 2 1 on the on that last fight means if they you know sound barrier first, then they can just retreat, use their own sound barrier, they have a lot of control here. Then this is gonna be a huge edge for six blow coming into the second map. Obviously high ground being contested here by Sungon, but kind of alone at the moment. Here comes the tracer. With the rush and the beat machine. Perfect beat there. Keep everyone in that barrier. So what follows after Singan very close. They just retreat. Six full very disciplined here. Q presses first. Double soldier. Okay, so this is kind of what we expected. You know, they have high ground control. Mm -hmm. Beam machine barriers first, knowing he has barrier advantage. Oh, hold and up. They just retreat. As this is a nice little back door. Uh-huh. That bought them some time. And Petal's actually got a kill on the TQQ. What a relieving moment for them. Without using the ultimate boat. Oh, Dukes. Can Ju actually rejoin the team safely though? He had to recall. Looks like he is gonna get back. You can see him there on the right side of your screen wrapping around. Who attempts the pulse and it does not get a kill. Still some damage on the pressure. The problem is flanking the cart like that doesn't necessarily matter unless you can regain high ground. And they will be able to get it here, but it doesn't matter because they have, they're the ones who are behind. Early flux. Most pressure only forces off the beat. And Kiru will have an early beat this time again. This ends. And pedals in the air. One they need damage. to win the Second, fight. the third comes in for the kill. Pressure is going to get taken out as well. Great. Overclock here, even the regular right click there is gonna come up big, even taking out TQQ at the end. Ju did die somehow to that rail gun, but it doesn't ultimately matter too much. And now finally, 3-2-1 diving can really get on the board and start to contest this high ground here on red side. And as you can see, six blow with a lot of ultimates, but not that critical sound barrier here. And Dukes is down. Oh, another Don't pedals peak. again. Don't peak pedals, man. They're not respecting this guy. I mean, you're peeking as an echo as well. Like, you're not going to kill that Sojourn unless you have help, and he did not. I wasn't 100% without pedals because it was we only saw Pacific matches in the last few matches, but he's showing up big time today. And Flux, no extra kills, just the field. As Sunga Proxy is very low, has to fall back. And gets a heal from that Lucio. Eventually, he has to pop that Ant Matrix. 
Looks like he's doing another Sigma with the Fear Call. Uh, Lucio going down early. Six below, I think they still want to challenge this. Dukes not able to get that yet. Focus on to Sigma. There it is. And unfortunately not enough time. And the beat just a little too late from Meme Machine. And Sigma down already. Oh, but here's battles again. And they will contest. That much damage onto our tank. Okay, that should be the cart taking advantage for 3-2-1. Dukes has finally knocked out of the sky there. Mind you, finishing the last like 10% of his health. Gonna push towards the checkpoint here now. They should be pushing pedals onto this high ground. He's reset and gone back to the McCree, or sorry, the uh, Cassidy here. And I, I am not sure about that swap because now TQ has overclock. We have the robot. And I think he's just a lot more concerned. Yeah, it's an interesting call, and they actually don't end up or getting the control of the high ground. Uh -huh. I think this was a bit of an error from Pedals. Yeah, now, but Echo feeling a lot more pressure now, as you can see him dead. I know he's a good, I know Pedals certainly a great soldier player, but Cassidy's also a hit scan. Yes, with that Echo dead, Lux only on one. And it almost seemed like he delivered into the top. I, you know, there's a lot. Okay, hold up, stuck. Bye bye, TQQ. Chu finally showing up. The Some cart back in control Echo. here. Okay, win that one, Yuan. <laughs> this is a scrappy one, G Clef. Really observers trying to keep, keep up as best as they can. Pressure. Maybe get a chase killer with a flux. It rolls away. No one in that flux. Very optimist. Think about that, that flux. And this robot might get a checkpoint off of this fight. Yeah, Pedals is just hard pushing right into them. Barrier is pretty good here for Six Flow. And it will give a lot more power for Six Flow to push extra miles. Oh, I, I want to talk about the swap to Cassie here for Pedals because obviously it's great into Echo. And maybe that means that he's been feeling the pressure. He's like, ah, oh, this Echo, I, I can't deal with it well with the Sojourn. I just don't want to deal with that anymore. I'm going to swap. And as you can see here, you can't take him out. Fight was already um, very likely over, but he is going to be able to get two here as a over push comes out from six blow. But he is struggling to survive and actually do consistent damage into TQQ. So there, there's po positives and negatives here. Obviously, weaker into the Sojourn, stronger into the Echo. And now they move into this part of the map here as they regain control of the robot. For this part, you're going to feel pretty good about it because it's really hard for the Sojourn to actually push through and, and break through that barrier. But when you get outside, that's when things get a little bit tougher. So good for this moment here. Deadeye's out. Yeah, but pedal going incredibly low. And the... Oh. Dies a little too fast. There's a stick from Ju to turn things around. Echo dead, 4-4. Four, four. But with the Kitsune Mirage, 6 low. Having the push. Now with Aim Matrix, sometimes getting that heal. Seems like that Sigma is still okay for now as DQQ. Just catch this tracer. Slides away. Don't exactly know where the recall went to. Locks off of the side wall. And Sigan Pedal fighting one each. This, I mean, this game is like hard to analyze because it is just a slugfest. And right now, 3 2 1 diving. I mean, here's, here's the ultimate truth. Like, they will, barring a huge accident here or a huge mistake, Finally retake control of distance here. Five meters to go for that to happen. A full high ground control. There's just no way a contest is gonna come through. So they do now match. 66.42. We'll be able to take the lead. Dukes does have this uh, duplicate. He can actually look for Sungon and they could even maybe look for like a double flux. There's a lot of great ways for this next team fight to go six blows away, but there's only 70 seconds left. So they really, you know, which is G Club. Look at the distance. They didn't actually push it past checkpoint. Yeah, it was just a checkpoint. It took exactly the same. Uh, there's only 60 seconds left. Is, are we actually going to see a draw? <laughs> this is actually insane. Um, Let's a minute now. Here's kind of Dukes. The duplicate flux pressure. To have more, more room for the team. Now with that extra hit, pressure to Kume. Nope, not going to be a draw. And that is the push through. 3 2 1 diving really needed to win this fight. They needed to win the last one. Do not this time. He's hiding behind, <laughs> behind the rock doesn't really help as there's a Sigma. 
Petals will have a dead eye here, but they have to win every fight and push past 90 to bring this to a 2-0 lead. We're just exchanging blows here in neutral. Someone's gonna have to tag. Yeah, the slow up, man. Over 100 meters. With no one diving, they need to go big time. There's a rush start and the beat. But Dead Eye finds no one directly, and there's the pedals. They get through that barrier for pressure. And that's members going down already. 3 to 1 diving, the beam machine. Beat onto two supports. But no one near that robot, so that will be six blow. Fighting back this time. And 1 1 tight series. Well, that was a big improvement. That was mm -hmm. the best map we've seen from Six Blows so far. Most discipline that we've seen out of them. They knew how to disengage. The, my favorite part about that map was the several different times where Me Machine tried to use Sound Barrier Advantage, and they were just like, nope, that's cool. We'll back off. And then once it's down, we'll re-engage. They didn't really do that in the series uh, earlier against Yeti when the Sound Barrier um, Disadvantage was theirs. Also in map one, there was one fight where things mm -hmm. went a little bit awry. This time playing very measured and understanding how to play high ground i think the swap to cassidy <clears throat> still some questions there yeah i i i i, I think i, the I actually kind of liked it I, I i i like the sojourn more just because i feel like if you win the matchup against tqq mm. then the echo can be killed by anybody like you can kill the echo mm. with, with literally even the tracer is going to feel pretty good just chasing and killing the echo that's kind of that's my take on coliseo that we don't normally see like mm. echo stick around this long on coliseo this is kind of a Exclusive strategy here for um, six blow, but I, I think Petal saw a different aspect to it. I think it was she was try also trying to help Sengan win win that Sigma because Sengan was getting focused and he was the first to die in two of the team fights before that switch. So I thought Petal's okay. I'm winning that Sojourn battle, so maybe I can have the extra room. I can pop off even more with that. Cassidy. Yeah, and in games where it gets that scrappy, mm -hmm. when it's just like a hands diff type of situation where every fight is just who cares about ult economy? We're just going in, 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 in. Uh, Cassidy's going to feel a lot better there, um, just because he's got his mag grenade. He's going to be able to survive a little bit with his roll. He does more damage. You know, if a tracer's up in his face, he might just be able to kill her straight up. Echoes up in his face might be able to just kill her straight up. So. I, I do see the angles. I think from like a okay. highest level standpoint, though, I don't, I don't know. It's a, it's a tough call. Oh, well, th we do have a short break before going into map number three. So we'll see who carries on. It's 1-1 one, one tight series so far.
And welcome back, everyone, to the wild card, one and only. We are going through the second series of the day. It seems like Yeti is very likely to take the entire thing, but for now, six flow versus a three to one diving, one one tie. You'll notice in wild card, the first four the letters are wild, and it has been a pretty good description of what we've seen so far. We saw the most one sided series of all time, all time. into the most scrappy and close wild back and forth. We almost had a tie on push. Um, series. So I don't know what's going to happen, G Club. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to pick. It's going to be the map choice here this time of three, two, one diving, mm -hmm. as they didn't end up losing that second map. And I think oh that warg GG is not totally correct. I thought it was Wara GG. Well, we might have to fix on that. And yeah. don't go to that website yet. I don't think that exists. <laughs> I think it's Warg. Any Warg GG? enjoyers? Not Warg. Uh, we'll have that fixed uh, later on. Good so. catch, G Clef. G Clef does. You mentioned not. wild card. I thought I thought you were leaning into it. Nobody gets past G Clef. No time. Nobody. Oh, um, uh, maybe maybe these three. Let's explode. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeti. Suravasa is going to be the map choice here. So we're going to Flashpoint. Um. That, that's the depth of what I want to tell you guys I think is going to happen, is that we're going to serve Asa. <laughs> oh, I do think we will probably see a little bit more uh, Echo here. I think you can still play Echo, and Six Blows seem like they mm -hmm. are finding more success with this. They're enjoying playing it more. Um, you know, Undersea from Insomnia was arguably the best Echo player in OWCS Japan and played it almost exclusively throughout the entire tournament. We're seeing a little bit of a match from Dukes today. He's, he's really forcing it. And uh, you know what? It might be what gets them across the line. Yep. And Turbasa is ready. 1-1 one, one tied series between 6 Blow and 3-2-1 diving. Let's see who takes this one. If you're just tuning in, welcome. Let's take a look at that crocodile. Now, also, if you're just tuning in, in terms of stakes, 6 Blow are eliminated. They're not going to OWCS Asia, but 3-2-1 diving have to win this and the series against Yeti in order to qualify, so it still means a lot to them. For Six Blow, we'll be running the Genji on this first point. Very common on Suravasa, actually. Running it with the Cassidy it. as well here, so a very unique Genji composition they've set up. Yeah, it is, because it is somewhat of a limit from Sung uh, Sungan's hero pool, because it's Sigma start, and they, Six Blow, they know this is happening, as this Genji will always be off to the side, in some moments on control, it's going to be very similar of how this is going to be done. Just threatening him here on the side and constantly touching so that they do not end up giving the cap as he builds 30% of a Dragon Blade. That's not enough. But you know what? If you get the kill, that'll be enough. Yeah, you immediately get the kill first. No Sigma do six strikes again. Triple for Duke as he will build 60%, they'll get the first cap. And very good for 6th blow here. And so, wouldn't it be yeah. crazy, like, g -Clef, imagine how crazy it is that if they had just not messed up control, they'd still be in the run. Yeah, and also, I, I also thought this uh, this map choice from 3 to 1 is actually uh, not the most perfect one. Okay, Pedal's just showing up big time. If you do that, you can do that on any map and just win the game. Six Blow just doesn't do this with other teams in Japan as well. Like, I know. why are they chasing and giving up these elims? This is so strange. Okay, well, that's 3 2 1 diving getting a freebie. Not the first time, not the second time in this series we've seen team fights go their way. Not on Cassidy. Has to recall to avoid his own pulse. <laughs> Very bizarre. Yeah, that was there. an off timing recall, just not, not to take extra damage. Blue, trying to get the flip now. There's a rush again. First one here. Switch strike. Duke's feeling okay as there's no contest. 3 to 1 just backing off. Waiting for that matrix. We'll be coming on 9 and 2. 1. Okay, here it comes. As that window up, pedals immediate kill. Tiki Q. And Dukes isn't going to get a blade on this fight. So this is. A really rough situation. We got the flip back, but we're gonna lose this fight. Sound barrier will be up for Kiru, and they need to use it late. Remember last time we've seen a few of these insta mm -hmm. sound barriers from Kiru? Wait a few seconds, and then sound barrier when you re-engage the bleed. That is what you have to do here at Six Blow. If you want to win this fight, you're gonna have to deal with Flux, you're gonna have to deal with Deadeye, so 
It's gonna be a tight fight here. One mistake, and that's it. You're gonna lose this first flashpoint. This last fight territory here for the first point. Ricky one diving. The early B crossing down. Responding with the flux. And the cover is good from Kiru. Perfect sound barrier. Machine trying to do what he can because, because they do have it. And here's the flip. Six flow with more members. Some more down. time. And Song An comes back big time. But without the DPS from Six Below, they still want to contest. And Meme Machine here just trying to buy time. And he is doing a good job of that so far. Here comes Sung Ang. Okay, he's picked instantly. Yeah, pressure is still there. So I think 3 2 on diving. Unless we're, we're going to have pedals. Should be back soon. Ju here also has recall. We'll use it. They're just going to give this up. Very uh, scrappy fight there that looked like maybe 3 2 1 diving was going to be able to turn around. Mm -hmm. Six Blue always had the advantage. They built a second sound barrier, basically, a full sound barrier off of that extended fight, 80% of it. Dukes did not have to blade, didn't have the chance to, and then he was like, well, okay, we win this without this, so gets to keep it. Now has a neutral fight blade set and ready. Use it here into the back line, is spotted. And with the immortality field up, definitely would not have advised just dive bombing his way into that one. We'll need a little bit more setup first. Something like a dead eye. Could we start things off here for three, two, one. That is out for pedals. Dukes don't even need the blade. To use it. Just to deflect, and there's a rush to Kumi again. Now he's blade blade. opportunity. These mean machines slashes through. Be calm and ready for the blade as the team was kind of winning. There's a bit of a fire back from proxies, but the team fight already taken. The problem with opening with Blade for Petals there is you need the immortality, or with uh, Deadeye, is you need the immortality field to make sure that you can actually get value out of it. And then once the immortality field is down, Dragon Blade's gonna come out. And that's why I was, you know, leading into is if Petals, Deadeye is instantly there, then you get a huge opportunity and Dukes, he seized upon it. Thanks for the help. You're welcome. Always appreciate. Also not taking the same damage after the field, going very low, but still survives. Dukes down first. The rock and there's the Matrix. Up for 3 2 1 diving, Kiru. He's not really having the best speed there, as couldn't really accomplish the mission having all five. Slow rotation in for the flip 3 2 1 diving. There it is, there's a flip. Lux is ready here for Sungon as well, so. They might be able to hold on to this for quite a while. Kiro also using the sound barrier, losing the point. I mean, Meme Machine has a huge edge. They're going to flux now. They just want to win this fight straight up. You can believe. So Nan will be able to catch. And along with that rotation, Pedal just joins the fight as this guy eventually going down to, from Kiriko. And that pulse wasn't even required enough damage. Members coming out from 3 2 1 diving. They do have the flip and the win. Decisive fight without sound barrier. You okay there? Yeah, I just uh, <clears throat> got really excited. Um, That's what happened. Mm -hmm. Something in my throat. But anyway, Me Machine's gonna keep barrier. So that's the most impactful ultimate out of the five that they have. And so if they just win this fight off a of barrier alone, they tie us up one to one on Flashpoint here. So TQQ. Ideally wants to get an insta pick. If he could kill Meme Machine before he sound barriers, that might just be a enough alone. Or looking for him, forces it now. Oh, early beat. Give them some time, but they can give ours back too. Straight into his face. Overclock still up. Pedals, 1 HP. Eventually found by that Genji. This is the flip that Six Flow has been looking for. Should be 2-0. It's 3-2-1 diving. Keeps on fighting for this long. Oh, this is going to be 2-0, very likely. Yep, it definitely is. Six Blow looking to take this one away. And the sound barrier timing there for Meme Machine, like he saw that TQQ had an angle on him. He got hit by a Railgun body shot, and he was like, better barrier, because I'm pretty sure he has Railgun, or uh, Overclock, rather. But I don't know if that was necessary. I love this from Six Blow, just evacuate the point and move towards what they expected location for the final point, or potentially the final point would be. They know where it's going to be. They rush towards it so they can get the advantage here, or at least make sure they can contest straight up and make sure 3-2-1 doesn't get oh, a huge edge. Oh, found. Shift strikes in. Pulse, force out a recall. So, if they can force a... Okay, hold up. Are these blocks? 
Dodge. Trying to dodge. Okay, dodges uh, the rock. Immortality field's out now. You know what Dukes wants to do once that immortality field's gone. Okay, some extra damage on this and not. Not enough for the kill. There's the beat from Kiru. Great timing as Dukes just goes in. Not played, not fired. Might have wanted to use it. It is going to be, I think, it a win for them. It could have been cleaner if he used it. Yeah, I think that it's still a win for them. Although, as I say it, I, I don't know. Zoo could have turned it around as here's a like right as uh, the tracer was actually reloading. But pressure is here for the punch and some, you know, some more sustain coming out from six below at the end. Okay, so at the end of the day, did they need the blade though? I guess technically to get the capture. Now, had they bladed, would they have have a lot more control percentage? Mm -hmm. Yes, but they still now hold the blade, which maybe they can was, utilize. Uh, maybe he was still waiting for the meme machine to get that beat enough charge, so you can get that out of the way. Uh, here's, here's the matrix. Okay, starting things off. Proxies and six below immediately just sliding down that ramp. Okay, dragon blade is ready, as mentioned. Locks up first. Uh, what? Sunga oh, great cover there. Good Suzu. And again, even without the blade, the beat is there for three. Oh, Red Petals actually finds that Genji. But a lot of teammates already dropped down. There's just Petals here off to the side. Dukes is just, he's doing the, um, you know, no blade April. It's the new trend. I saw it on TikTok where you just don't Dragon Blade, even if Immortality Field comes out early for your opponents. Uh, it goes viral, you get a lot of clicks. Um, no blade April. Uh, He's starting a little bit late because he did blade earlier um, on the earlier point, but you know. Oh, that's, that's a that. third! They don't Ooh. touch it. I, I, G Clef. G Clef. That's me, yes. You're calling me. I'm for sorry, what? I'm sorry that. Uh, I, I, I was so sure they would I'm, at least touch. I'm sorry that. I was they memeing when they were. Plenty of time. Yeah, they, they definitely did. They had more pressure than enough time. Or to not touch. pressure. Um, Pedal swap to Sojourn. And they made a very slow rotation, mm -hmm. and they just were denied the touch. Um, and our observers were also, <laughs> our observers and the Korean casters were definitely talking about No Blade April. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, whether or not it's legit, like if he bladed earlier on this April, which he did do, does it still count if he starts late? It's his first time, you know, doing No Blade April. But you can only do that when your team's winning. If your team's losing, Report time. <laughs> <laughs> like, there is there is no world Wolf in which that map should the brain have ended. Looking for nice words to say. Yes. Yeah. No. Yep. There's no way that map should have ended the way it just did, and it kind of happened like suddenly off like off camera for the most part. I mm -hmm. assumed that they were actually pushing around the other side and, and had a faster rotation mm -hmm. in there, and they were going to start juggling, and then. But it's never a faster rotation with Sigma all the way from the beginning yeah. to the end. So that's why I had the question of Suravasa. Okay, they had okay games on Travasa, but only against the Pacific teams. But at the level of higher level, and especially against like Korean teams, uh, just having Sigma all the way just does not work on Flashpoint these so days, even with Lucio. Six Blow have got to be kicking themselves, because if they had just played a lot more respectfully on Nepal, mm. on that first round, ah. on Sanctum... They still might have some... They actually chance. might still be in the running... Mm. To go to to go through, uh, of course that would of course then require three two one to beat Yeti. It's not likely, but now they're going to win the series and it won't necessarily mean anything. And then we might have the most more one sided stomp of all oh, time yes. that we had earlier. <laughs> I am expecting some wild to hero be honest, picks. Though, based on how I'm Pedal cool. has been playing so far, mm. I actually think three two one. Even if they lose this series, might put up a better fight. I actually think they might be able to to contest. Like knife might have a little bit more trouble dealing with pedal. Mm -hmm. As six blow, they've been gifted some some good fights in this one. For the first fight, uh, there was a moment where pedals he shot six, got five headshots. Insane hit scan. Like the damage output is just crazy. Of course, uh, he had a lot of space. Of course, they already had two men down for the other three. Uh, but this guy's on fire, and I think literally uh, the match is now over. But pedals, I think I can totally see him being picked up by some other team in the future. It's kind of crazy how well he can actually play. I think uh, after watching him today again, I think he might actually be better than Hofak.
Oh, in terms of hit scan. And there are Say lots, about my lots. Goat. I know you're a big Ho fan, uh, Ho Fak fan. I am a Ho fan, that's right. I, I'm a Ho Fak <laughs> fan. They call us Ho fans, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know there are a lot of Ho fans out there, but pedal fans think he, it's rise up. I think pedals uh, sort of think got the talent. If you can get those set heads easy, like, I will always say yes to Cassie, Soldier, to just do whatever you want to. So you know how um, there's this meme that the young people say, and now that the old the young casters people say, say we're still so young. Let them let them cook. Uh huh. This series has cooked me, G Club. <laughs> oh, I am I am slightly cooked. overcooked. I am a little cooked right now. <laughs> Are you like medium cooked or rare cooked? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm talking like more than well done. <laughs> it's so overcooked. I'm talking charred, G Club. I'm talking, you're gonna be shaving the, the crusts off. Overcooked up. Overcooked two? <laughs> or a third? I'm glad I'm here with you to play co op for this one. <laughs> no, this is overcooked no, two. Right I, need now. To, I need to find the fire extinguisher because there's fire all over and I can't find any ingredients. <laughs> I'm about to get sprayed by the sprinkler on this one. Um, all right, Midtown is the map selection here. It's uh, our most standard hybrid map for sure. And this is where 3 2 1 had to bring it back. Otherwise, it is almost guaranteed that Yeti is going. And we'll see. We're popping into game real soon as Explow. They've got the group back. Let's see if they can finish with a 3 1 or 3 2 1 diving. They still can bring this. Force us into map number five. We'll see what happens here. Midtown it is. Back to streets of New York. Got a little quiet over in New York right now. That one statue fell over. Every time our observers show us something a little bit different. Oh, you touch, you buy. That's usually what's next to it. When you go into a souvenir shop. I usually it's if you break it, you buy it. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you can touch it. Like it's touching is sometimes your KG club. No, no touching allowed. No touching allowed. <laughs> Um, usually it says, please don't touch or please keep your children with you so they don't <laughs> touch and or break. Um, I think TQQ went yeah. very low, but is able to survive here. Yeah, some dangerous moments. Uh, we can see from the ultimates, uh, it must have been pedal, swing, pedal delivering the damage again. And here's Sinan. Again on Sigma, but this is the best map for Sigma. At least point A. So, great pressure. Dropping down, going towards the point. Some more space available for 3 to 1 diving. I like the rotation. Full pressure uh, with all five. There's Dukes. Not in the air, so we'll be caught by uh, Zoo. Traded with TQQ. Uh, with Dukes with Zoo. Goes back on his feet. TQQ feels safer. Okay, that should be stabilization here. 4 3 2 1 diving. Spawn advantage is theirs. Kiru. Going aggressive. He's crazy. But he's the team is winning the fight, and they have the spawn. Coming back through, it re regroups in 3, 2, 1. That is the end of this push. It was a very long extended one, but will massively favor in terms of the time bank eroded here. Six blow with no ticks taken. Pedals going to be the last to respawn here. And, you know, this next push, your goal is to set up a window on the point. If you just use it right here into this choke, then six blow just walk away and say, okay, what what, what next? So, And when they rotate, I think pressure can counter that with the flux. Let's see the timing of the top next to train. I mean, he has that so much faster than Sunan. And Sunan's now not even required. There's a pulse down from Zoo, finds no one. Already two kills. And this look, he didn't even have to pop one out of five. Oh, an immortality field used here to try to secure the retreat, but that's on a long cooldown. And I mean, I don't know if it even necessarily matters. He's gone, so it's not even needed. At least they didn't pop the Ant Matrix. So I think that's one good sign. Still has 150 to go. I. I mean, it's, it's five ults here for six blow. They. Oops. Okay. Be safe now. They are in full control of this choke point. As look at Dukes just waiting for an opportunity to drop down with the clone. Bit of a rotation faster. Stand with the speed. Oh, high noon from TQQ early. No one come out. Buying about five more seconds. Dukes in the room. Has to pull the duplicate. Wanted that to come through. 
love great beat coming down from Beam Machine this time, and High Noon from Petals. But Dukes has enough, and he will find that Lucio first. Beam Machine just pushed back into the Deadeye there. That was massive. Likely a play there from Kiru, actually. Either that or pressures Rock. Even with the five ultimates, uh, 3 2 1 diving actually handled that pretty well. Just with the Lucio dead, of course, they're getting pushed back even further. But Duke's Don't dead. chase too much six blows. Duke's seen this before. Duke. Stop chasing this Double pulse. Six blows. This Stop it. It's the moment with 40 seconds. Stop it, six blow. Don't do it to me again. That's three for three. Three different objectives lost by over chasing. Don't do it. Ju pops off with a huge pulse bomb there. And they way overextend. And as you mentioned, the ult efficiency there for 3 2 1 looked like it wasn't necessarily going to matter because there was no time left in the tank. But you chase basically all the way back to spawn. And maybe they picked up the wrong lesson from Yeti. Because Yeti, they can chase you to spawn. That's allowed. Six blow. You know, maybe maybe in a, in a little while. Maybe when we, we improve a little bit more. But here's you with the recall. And Dukes. Yeah, no, I, I know exactly how you feel about that. Overextension it's by hard. the entire team. It's hard to know exactly how I feel, Jigo, but I think you're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> There's not, oh. Fish is getting the kill with the Dukes. What are you doing? Some work. What in the world is pressure doing up there like that? Like, this is, it's Orisa Dive. It's Orisa Dive, and they had high ground control, but no one was on it. Only the support, yeah, only they, one of the support, not even two. They had high ground control, then they were like, this let's chase uh, with Orisa into the enemy team, which has a Cassidy that's going to burst us down. That was not the right call, and now actually Six Blow trying to contest back the high ground. They don't have a Dragon Blade. We're off the mid, there's a Pulse. And Dukes next to the stairs. Chris Dukes with the Genji this time, though. After the field, whoever is out will be looking for that kill. Flugs. Pretty low value. Terra from pressure with the beat. So a lot of those drop from six blow and this has to be a win. So the plan G Clef was to intentionally drop down from high ground, lose the next team fight to then have a very successful fight. That you could test high ground with the into the flux with the sound barrier. That was the that was the idea, was just to yep, lose so the fight on purpose and then win the second one. There you go. Yep. Give them more distance to travel from the spawn. So Sigma will be a lot slower. And less than a minute now as six below there. Finally with Orisa. Orisa Genji Cassidy up on high ground, but he was ready with the beat. Proxies, 5 HP. Here's a push from Orisa. No Terra this time. Early beat for the engage as they take high ground. Battle look for that kill. Delivers one. For one more. Gold got stopped by that block. Got it, but will be traded. Sakume. Let's sing on cover. They should be able to push this to a contest here. Unless Dukes is crazy man and pulls out the blade, not gonna happen. Yeah, I think we'll still see six blow contest here because it's a Genji and he'll have a taxi to get back to this point. And pressure's already here. So the Dragon Blade fight might very well be six blows here. They might be able to hold on B. TQQ also gonna build a Deadeye in this fight, and he has line of sight right now, somehow miraculously just untouched. There's a blade now, Dukes. On the back, but a teleport and GQ finds one with the dead eye too. Pedals still there. Great deflect on there, Dukes. Yeah, but he's alone up here and just doesn't have the damage. They need more of a regroup. Pressure, up pressure against the wall, pushing and him back. Yeah, no one from 3 to one diving as pedals. He was, I believe, the only one after that fight. So that won't be a full hole, but still, 3 to one diving had their chance. I thought pressure was going to javelin him. I was waiting for it. Like, we had that cinematic, is anyone going to touch moment? And I was like, is he going to javelin him? He didn't. Um, well, Six Blow could have had the full hold. They did push too far. But they are able to, with a successful Dragon Blade there from Dukes and a really good deflect, he actually was able to, to toss the blade in, um, do massive amounts of damage, and then secure 
position there with the deflect, knowing the positioning there of pedals was really impressive. Yeah, I think without that blade, it could have been dangerous. Pedals was at least trading. Yeah, and yeah, pedals also like, he lived for a really long time there, but without any teammates, it was not going to be his win. Um, now three, two, one diving. They won't even know what happened. On the defense here, running the same composition. The late swaps coming through here. And Dukes is just hoping that he's going to get this done with a very quick push. This is not going to be a blade. Um, this is not like a Dragon Blade uh, eco push type of composition. They just want to get into the back line and blow them up. Dragon Blade is kind of a bonus here with House Explorer running this Orisa comp. I'm not a huge fan of this comp, but if they keep making it work, I'm not going to be the one to doubt them. And also a break coming out from Meme Machine. Yeah, it's a really good response. It was a, that was the swap they had, the late swap to come through to try to shut down this Genji a little bit more. Protect pedals here. So we'll see if there are any changes from Six Blow. After checking the comp of 3 to one diving, nope, just gonna, going to rotate off to the side and TQQ staying on the back behind the Risa with some cover. But Genji, Kirko Lucio, the side pressure. We believe that'll somehow find that headshot. That should be a reset here for six blow. Unless they can find something crazy, Dukes is trying. But can't do too much alone. Gets one. Gets Meme Machine. I mean, that that's significant before he dies there. Mm -hmm. Might be able to capitalize on that just a little bit here. If they immediately just come to yeah. the spawns. But here is Petals for the delay to get that Meme Machine back on fight on the capture. He'll we'll be able to shield bash time. his way back over. It takes some time. It's juice oh, down. Oh, down! Some of these critical headshots have massive impact. Now that's pedals. The entire team of 3-2-1 diving being pushed off of the capture as the tick is starting to build. Slowly as a lot of the members, I'm guessing, sick from Dick's blow is near pressure. Not on the point. Finally, they're stepping in. Looks like we might see a delayed kill here on to the Brig. No, actually committing the Matrix here. They do have a lot of members, but no pedals. But the Rock, the Boot, Lucio! Eventually goes down to Doom. Getting the Terra and the Rush. And the Everything on the point, but 3 2 1 diving. Well, that was definitely, let's say, ult inefficient for 3-2-1 diving. And if they were if they were there like a second and a half faster, if that if the timing of Pedal's death was a little bit earlier, I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, there's a real argument for this. You know, Me Machine get in there, you buy a lot of time with his rally, you could pull this off, you you have the, the the flux to follow up. You should be able to shut down the Dragon Blade because you have a Brigitte in this comp. But the timing was just very off, and now they've tossed a lot of ultimates away, especially that Ant Matrix. Is the timing of that a little bit questionable there. And it's four minutes in the time bank here for Six Blow, who will have a sound barrier that you can't even build or match because you're running Brigitte and that Dragon Blade. And we've seen how much of an impact Dukes can make on this Midtown map so far. It's coming in. Here's the push. Sure, on the payload. Uh, slowly going down to the tunnel. Ready with the flux. Going up in the air for the flux. Can you catch anyone? There's two. And high noon. Do the only one. Orisa dead. So six below, they might need to regroup unless there's a beat. They're not going to use it this time. Go back. No. Rock away. So they got the flux out of 3 2 1 diving. Now we're going to have. Sound Barrier Blade push, and maybe even a Terra Surge to contest the point if they can win uh, the fight off the blade, then they can keep the Terra Surge for the actual capture to win the map. They have the tools here, the question is how will they utilize them as they need to get Proxy's Immortality Field out some way. And if Petal's Deadeye is here and it has to be Immortality Fielded again before another Dragon Blade fight, I might lose it, G-Clef, because I feel like that every single Dragon Blade fight they've lost um, with the Immortality Field going down earlier and because they're trying to keep Petals alive. Okay, there's a blade. Oh, first! From the back, what a rotation! Coming up from 6 below with the beat early. Petals still alive. Slow down a little bit here. As this guy hits 
and <laughs> delivers bullets. So it's it's quite common to Dragon Blade the Brigida first because if you can kill her, then she can't mess with your blade, can't bash you. That's if you have a nice angle, you can just focus her down. But the follow-up there, he whiffed completely and Pedals ends up taking him out. Kitsune Rush is available here to try to get pressure into Terra Surge range, but this is very awkward for Six Blow now. You need to be very careful with how they choose to fight. Maybe they should wait for a pick first and then go in. I think it's probably the safest bet. Yeah, end of this alone. Coming from below will be making it easy for Zoo to get some extra kill and damage for the pulse. And they have to reset. They need to reset as soon as possible as well. with the rush. So, less chances. Uh, they still have to go through the entire tunnel. Yeah, the Kitsune rush was very questionable there. The Suzu was attempted to try to stop the pulse bomb, but wasn't really successful either. And 3-2-1 diving. On the verge of bringing us to five here, all they have to do is win one fight efficiently, then they have the rally. I mean, there's a lot of great tools here. Pressure, and without Rush, it's going to be so hard for him to get Terra Surge value. Look at this Ant Matrix. This is the kind of efficiency I'm talking about. Pedals. Oh, TQQ. Find so much time. Some distance. Finds that Tracer. I mean, the checkmate could be the sound barrier here for Six Blow, but they're just so far away from it. They need to buy time. Going down the tunnel here is the Terra. Heal down. Don't have the blade yet. Here's the Deadeye for Petals. And it must be right after the deflect. Yes. I think 3, 2, 1 diving have done this. I think, they, I think they're bringing us to 3 five. meters out. 40 seconds to go. And the deflect was was very cute. Like, oh, he's Deadeye. I just stand on with the deflect. Well, he can out la outlast that by just not left clicking until you're done and then kill you. That's what he did. No Dragon Blade, no Sound Barrier. They can build these ultimates in the longer fight. They need up. to do it, more. It is pressure is Doomfist, so let's still not give up. 20 seconds. I mean, it's, they have slow. some tools, but they're going to have to make this happen really quickly and very efficiently. Level up. There's a punch for the kill. Pedal's dead. Pedal's is just down. That's a window of opportunity. 10 seconds to go. Maybe Six Blow can do it. 3-2-1 diving. They're not over. Oh, no, too dead. That must be it. With the blade, onto Sungan, cannot use the flaws. There's the barrier too. It was very close, but immediate death onto Petals. It is Pressure's Doomfist at the end, and that will be it. With Midtown will be the final, the finisher of the series here, six below. Yeah, because of uh, the mathematical differentials against JD, they win the match, but still won't be able to be the first slot from going into Asia, but at least they take revenge onto a different team. Yeah, so whoever wins the next series is going to go um, to w or OWCS Asia um, with a win here coming over to Six Blow. Uh, that means it's a 0-1 for the side of 3-2-1. Uh, They're going to be negative 2. If they win 3-0, uh, they'll have a better map differential. That is what they, I think, will have to do, actually. I. Wait, let's do the math. Yeah, right. let's do the math. Because six below got 1-1, one, one, and so they're now from minus 3 to they're negative 1 now, right? Because this was plus 2. But 3 to 1, they have negative 2. So six below is negative 3, negative 1 now. Uh, 3 to 1, on. negative 2, and 0-1, obviously. Yeti is 1-0, is, um, plus 3. So if 3-2-1 <laughs> win 3-0, mm -hmm. they'll go up to plus one, Yeti will be zero. So they have to win 3-0, I guess. That's how it's going to work. Yeah, they have to. And the player of the match will be TQQ. Yeah, I mean, TQQ was the biggest uh, impact player. I feel like, yes, Dukes did steal the show with his Dragon Blades on the final two maps in a lot of ways, but... Some of those blades were a little bit questionable. It wasn't always very consistent. I think TQQ was the much stronger player overall uh, across all four maps, but ended up getting a little bit janky at times. Look, Six Blow, this was not their best game. This was not their, their, their strongest performance. Uh, we'll be honest with you guys. We have seen a lot better from them in the past. They did not show up today in a big way, and I think part of this was the 0-3 that they dropped. Yes, that was a big, uh, big blower. And six below, I think. Came back towards the end, but that really we could see that in Nepal. Sometimes they just didn't have it together. And it took them a few games, few maps, uh, to recollect themselves. And even on 
Midtown. Just going all the way forward. And almost, uh, almost not lost fully, but they were up for a lot more challenges because of some of those over-aggressive over, over moments. So all Yeti need to do is win a single match. One game and they will actually yeah. advance, right? Yeah. We will play the whole series, of course, but all they have to do is win. I assume that we will. I don't think we just, like, cut it off like it's done. Um, <laughs> no. But uh, all they have to not. do is win one map, mm -hmm. and that will be the end. Then they will move on. So they crushed Six Blow. Six Blow beat 3-2-1. Chances of Yeti taking a single map are quite high if you think about transitive property in the form of the teams that we just saw. So, good luck. <laughs> yes, good luck, 3-2-1. Good, good luck, 3-2-1, as uh, that's going to be the next matchup. As, yeah, 3-2-1 victory for 6 Flow. I don't even know why we have that graphic, because usually when we have that graphic, it usually means that we are going to the next map. And that 5 looks like the... Upside down. Upside two. down too. I know. Yeah, I, it gets me every time. I don't know why that looks like that. It should be slightly should more pixel like that. It should just be a five. Um, that's very strange. But I noticed that from week one, and I was like, ah, oh, just you know, I'm gonna keep it inside. But you, you now you mentioned it. I'm like, well, we gotta talk about this. <laughs> oh well, we'll take a short break, and when we come back, we will have that coming up next match. Will be Yeti versus Three Two One Diving.
Welcome back, everyone, to the last match of wildcard going into uh, OWCS Asia. Seems like Yeti is the big favor and uh, favorite, and they only have to get one map technically to qualify for that bitch stage. So six blow, basically one four zero against three two one diving. Um, they won the first map and then tossed it back, and then won the next three. Uh, and so they had a pretty. It was, one three. It was close. It was a close. <laughs> You know, series at points, but mm -hmm. for the most part, it was pretty one-sided, right? Now, in 15 minutes, and I, I've been telling you 1507, it's 1509, actually. 15, was the time. 15 minutes and 9 seconds of gameplay was what Yeti dispatched 6 blow with 3-0. Fastest series I've ever commentated. Now, they play against the weaker team. And the question is, can they beat the record of 1509? I'm going to ask you guys in the chat. That's a good throw. And those on, on Reddit to... You guys should catch that. Please keep track of that. Because I, I, I am curious just if they can the beat game their time, own pace. Right? Yeah. Is just the game time after the gates open or... As soon as the gates open, As yeah. soon as the gate open until... In-game clock only. Ooh, the yeah. slowdown, okay? In-game clock only. Um, you know, if you guys can calculate overtime and stuff like that, that would be helpful too. But, you know, get as close as you can. Because somebody already put the numbers up. 15.09. And... Stakes... One win for Yeti on any map. Doesn't even matter if they lose the series. Mm -hmm. And they're in. They're going to OWCS. Yes, they Asia. are in. Because 3-2-1, they already lost to uh, Six Blow, which means that even if this becomes a win-loss tri triangle, Yeti will just have one more than anyone else. And, that, and yeah, because of head-to-head -head and the differentials don't, won't even matter on top of that. That's so. why winning it in a dominant fashion is important. Mm -hmm. It certainly is, and very likely they would not just get one map off of 3 to one We had 0-1, 0-3, uh, and you said 4-0, but 3-1. It, it was basically a 4-0. <laughs> they threw that the first map away, G Club. That control was lost. 3-2-1 uh, diving, yet to show their real diving, it was all Sigma. Oh, Sigma. Yeah, 3 2 1, Sigma Cassidy. Yeah. 3 2 1, the enemy team is diving with Genji. <laughs> they had moments of they had moments of Winston two two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. So my expectation for Yeti is they will just continue to run Sojourn Tracer. Uh -huh. And Viper will be the main character this time around. Because it was Knife and Dohawk who crushed six blow. This time I think Viper is gonna have a lot more agency into the Sigma, assuming that we continue to see Sigma here out of Sungan. So we'll see what Viper can get done. The support line here is very, very strong for this roster. We talked about it earlier, but it hasn't been about that because they haven't had to do that much healing. Um, <laughs> as it turns out, they're just kind of along for the ride. Sound barrier timings for Bliss have been pretty good. And uh, yeah, this team absolutely dominated. They played the Roadhog for funsies and they still were able to Basically, full hold escort. I think Dongak can actually, in this type of uh, matchup, especially against Sigma, I think he can actually bring some. So first, Orisa, and then a lot more Doomfist in the game, which would put them a lot more aggressive on the line, making it easier for Viper and Knife to do the action. So here is 3 to 1 diving, no changes. Uh, Spook and Chun Li in the bench. A pedal, Zoo, Sojourn, oh, Cassidy, and the Traitor player. So not mostly on Sigma, but. It's not out of the question where you can go into some other tanks as yet to see any other tanks coming up from Sungan. No Junk Queen on screen, no Winston, no Orisa whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, you know, this isn't really a meta for it, but see what they end up playing here. I imagine they're going to keep it the same because that's what they prepared for today. And this roster, you know, obviously has Pedals as I feel like their their main character. Pedals and Sungan are the Korean players on this roster. Um, by the way, just to let everyone know. Nepal again for starters. And then Loser will pick after this. Um, you know, this roster has a pretty wide um, variety of nationalities on it. They still are able to communicate pretty well. They're able to get top three in their region, uh, which is Pacific. If you guys haven't been following along, so... You know, it's a pretty unique team. It's a team I'd love to see mm -hmm. find great success, but against a team like Yeti, you know, it's it's the cards you've drawn, you've, you've been dealt. Like, you have um, a very strong Korean team here in Yeti who 
surged forward to be one of the big dark horses to maybe even make it to the finals at the end of the tournament. Then they got 3-0 by FTG, and now they're down here. And uh, it just feels like a stomping ground here for Yeti right now. As, as Pacific, they did have a slightly different format compared to Korea and Japan for stage number one. So they did have less uh, games, matches to be played. And maybe, but which means they also had a lot more time to practice uh, because their season was actually, uh, the regular season, you can say the climb was over two weeks ago. But here we go, 3 to one diving. Let's see what they can do against Yeti. Seems to be the big favorite of this matchup. Let's go to Nepal. I would love to see Junkrat on the map because this is the map where you can actually play some Junkrat. You definitely could. Um, you could also play Ramatra, Bastion, Symmetra. And they... Oh, here we go. Junkrat. Is it happening? G-Club, it's happening! Yes. This is actually the map for this Junk. It's pretty decent into this May comp as well. Oh, finds one! First blood, and it will be night on this junk rat. Three kills already, and that's a GG for team fight. Yep, that's the end of this first fight. As Dohawk is just gonna farm some annihilation charge here on the exit kills, as we'll see what three, two, one diving on a run here. The tracer into this can be quite tricky to pilot, as you need to have insane tracking onto the head, and then pulse bomb kills are required to kill the Ramatra, the junk rat has the peel of the satchel charge. And, you know, obviously I don't need to say anything about the Symmetra shielding. Can maybe even, you know, be blocked completely by Immortality Field with the Pulse. So this Tracer, very difficult to get value out of uh, as Ju here, but we'll see what he does get done. Mostly on the top. And so we just forming turrets. And without the teleporter coming back in a second. Having a easier time rotating. Woes on pedals? Almost. Not quite. Oh, knife. Actually, with the up with satchel the, yeah. charge in the air. Yeah, you get many charges. And sometimes. Another you... satchel kill on the proxies. You don't have to have the best aim on this hero. But if you have good timing, it's sometimes enough. Me machine. Running away with the speed boost himself. Just for safety, and this is 55% already. Maybe we will barely get to see that tire. I mean, I, I do think we get to see it. I think it might be what ends the, the first round, mm -hmm. as he really will just need to hit a few left clicks and the one even, satchel, and that's yeah, it. Even Irony is just full damage now. Go on top oh. by himself, but no one's even contesting him. Scratches from Zoo. 84% of a tire, 90. Here's Doomfist. Look at the change. Oh, right next to that Matrix. Pulse bomb at the ready. Maybe lower. he can stop the junk rat. Nope. Not this time. He's moving away, but did take some damage from the Pulse. All right, Viper is dead on the first round. He's not winning the No Deaths contest this series around. Certainly not. Dohawk yet to fall. Might, might follow that. Here's okay, the here's tire. The tire. Where's he going? It's coming from the beat. Looks okay. But that's 100! As we see, the Doomfist and the Tracer trying to attempt. Yeah, why didn't we get to see the tire? It was destroyed. I was about to yell out, like, everybody message Jake on Twitter. It's happening. And I was going to be like, it's a, it's a 2K for knife. Okay, wait. It, oh, oh, no, it's just the, it's just the other game. Oh. I was getting excited too. I was yeah, to maybe we'll get it at the end. Hold on. Yeah, Look at the damage this Junkrat this does went. into the Arisa comp. They get split in half. He's like, goodbye, proxies. No, no, tire is gone. Yeah. That was just last split second for the no, no touch. No touch. And that's 100 to 0 first. And the PAL and Yeti changing up the comp here. Genji Widow. All right, so Zarya. Genji Widow, mind you. A little Brigida flavor. See what Donha can get done on this Zarya. Oh, me when she caught. Nice he is just shot. down right away. What is that Widow exactly? Okay, all the way on top. Slingshot. All right, stickies, 59. He might die. 
Okay, Knife and Viper both have died now. That all faded. So is it Donghak only who didn't die? I think it might be day? I think Donghak and Bliss. Irony, I believe, did die. Okay, two falls to the shield. And here's Viper. First cap comes through for Yeti. They don't any percentage going to 3 to 1 diving. Pedals, though! Okay, Bliss is down. Here Donghak, he is. man, he might be the last one standing. He is Zarya. Already 54, actually matching a good number. So is yes. so low. Okay, balls. There must be some energy charged up. Yes, it is. Fully charged up damage. Yeah, he's ready to just walk towards him. Just oh, strike in. No contest. Doesn't even get the bubble. Not required. Yeah, and... Uh, yeah, 34. And Knight, again. It's going full front. I appreciate the excitement, G Cliff. As uh, it's it's looking rough. It's not looking good for diving. And no. here's the real diving coming up from Yeti with Here the we blade. Go. We'll only be able to find one because they have lost members already. Singan finds knife. As Zoo is trying to fire back with the own Widowmaker. Or Arisa getting chased down by Genji left clicks. Be killed by the cold fist. So you tried it to have some some more damage for the Widowmaker from the spawn. We'll be back on Tracer. Seems like that is the best hero. Not entirely sure to... what. Oh, went... Graviton went. Yeah, out that was bugged. There. I'm not sure where he used it. But... Maybe towards the spawn. Yeah. Infraside on from Knife. Yes. Let's see what happens. Even the rally. Irony is not supporting anyone, <laughs> but. So you get some more kills. Okay, Ju gonna take oh, out Donghak died. here. Yeah, okay. First death. I think everybody's dead now. Everyone's First died death. on Yeti. First death of, of the, the day. day. Okay. Here's the Terra. Terra Come surge. On. They actually win this 95%. fight. 95 percent. Donghak. Oh, there's a flip. Yeah. First team to get a percentage off of Yeti today. There you go. All right, three to one diving. Do not underestimate them. Donghak is on Reinhardt. Is he waiting for the Symmetra? No, I think, I, I think so. Maybe. Perhaps just waiting for Bliss to taxi him over. Maybe he's trying to make Knife play Symmetra, Symmetra but not, gonna, not going to happen. Knife's that, like, no, dude, I'm playing Widow. What that, are you doing? That charge? Okay, he takes Where out the he Tracer. He's coming from the back. Yeah, he's just going to swing charge. his way in. Well, well handled by Orisa. But the second kill comes through from Knife. Even the beat not saving everyone on the team. Okay, here's a bit of an attempt. There's a kill on the Widowmaker. 3 to 1 diving. Their focus fire is okay, but Piper still stands. Oh, not stands. He's in the air. And 3 to 1 diving. That was good attempts. 49%. Dragon Blade here is ready, and Petals is out. Taken out by Bliss. Bliss gets the 2k. Dragon Blade not even needed. I don't even know where it is. Here's Sungan shooting at a different angle. And there's a charge that Dongak wanted all this game. <laughs> that will be the second going. The pal, taking for Yeti, and they have secured their ticket to OWCS Asia. They did it. They did it. They did it in flashy fashion. They lost the point. They were like, "All right, it's Reinhardt time." Already an accomplishment from Three T One Diving. They successfully uh, killed at least one or more of everybody. I think they killed Yeti. every member. Uh, I'm pretty sure Irony died Don't in the first once. round. Yes, Irony, Irony, Blizz, and I think they all fell at least once or more. Yeah, so pretty long start. I don't think Yeti is beating their record today. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll have to see, you know, depending on what happens with the map selection. Yeah, I think that was already about seven, they could, seven minutes. They could, if we go to um, push again, they could, like, beat the record on their their own push um timer because they were at 531 so they could do like a you know 630 push to cut off one extra minute uh no I, no i think i don't think we can beat the record of 1509 now if they with two maps two more maps if they don't if we don't play push at all and we play only escort and hybrid and three two one um do attack first both times i think there's a way i, I think it is possible oh okay but We'll have to wait and see what just they do. Full choose. hold, full hold, and then just to, straight to the point. Yeah. We'll have to see what they choose as uh, Coliseo was the map pick of six below. And so they might not necessarily be interested in going to, to push mm -hmm. because 
You know, that wasn't like that was a map type they couldn't choose because it was chosen by Sixplo instantly. So we don't know whether they want to play that or not today. If that's what they've been working on, if that's what they've been preparing. I think Flashpoint uh, should be one of the better, uh, better ones for three, two, one diving. Not so for Sungan because he's been playing a lot of Sigma, but we've seen his moment now switching over to Doomfist and some other heroes. I think uh, it's now or never, and giving some more open ground for pedals. I think it's what they really have to go for. He's delivering the damage. He's the one to. Who has been getting the kills? So give him the map that he wants. I think that should be like the first, first thing that you are you should be thinking when you're choosing the map. Now, what if three, two, one, diving? Just go. You know what? That's it. We're out. It's time for Junkrat Mirror. I you, I want to play. <laughs> no, no Junkrat Mirror. I want to play Widowmaker. Nepal. That stage was the only Junkrat potential. Wait, am I missing anything else? I don't think so. Surabasa, by the way, is where we're going. For, so we want a Flashpoint. Okay, we are going to Flashpoint. I don't think the record can be broken with Flashpoint as a map choice. But we will see what they can get done as the last uh, parts of that, you know, of, of Nepal were a little bit scrappy, a little bit up in the air in terms of some weird hero swaps that came through from Yeti as they were having a little bit of fun. Didn't hey, end up overextending yeah. that one fight. Hey, we had Junkrat, and I think we can kind of be satisfied from that Nepal. And I think it did make a lot of people happy as competitive Junkrat play. Only, uh, for those of you in Overwatch, uh, Golden Blow only. <laughs> competitive? Uh, I don't know if that does the justice what we did watch there, G-Clef, but it was a successful Junkrat play that we saw from a Korean team mm -hmm. that was televised. It was televised. It was broadcast. Of a thousand, tens of thousands, and we're going into Suravasa map number two. As Yeti looking to get another one, we're seeing a lot of different unusual heroes. And Five, let's four, see if they stay until the gates open. Two. Map two, here we go, Wolf. And we have this comp on that's the not a, That's not a comp. This is out of this world comp. It's not. It's not a comp. They. It's a practicing. It's a practice mode loading. Mystery heroes. Loading time <laughs> comp. Mystery heroes. G Club. If Irony kills, or if he dies, can he respawn as a DPS hero? We'll find out. Are they gonna die ever? We'll find out. As no Moira. Moira actually really strong in this, and on the first point of Sarabasa, uh, like in all seriousness, you can get serious with him. Viper? Value. Is he insane? <laughs> no, he's alright. Yeah. Cap goes first over. First cap. Yes. That's why there's a first cap. Now, Knife didn't actually control high ground. Don't not. And he will be. Not 276. HP was 76. Helix? Finds battles. This might be the opportunity. They do have extra healing from Viper. Not anymore. Well, that's that. We're going to see the Wrecking Ball swap here. Knife's going to stick with the Widowmaker. And. I do not advise it. However, if they can get him into position to get line of sight or get him onto the high ground, it can work out as Bliss is staggered. And Yeti might actually lose a point of... Uh, lose a flash point here. Bliss going to swap over to the Lucio knife back onto the Tracer. And with no ults here, I mean, it's not impossible, but it's very tough. I wouldn't put it past Yeti, though. They are the stronger team. Yeah, Viper, that's your teammate. Again. And there's Dongok now. Someone looking for Contest. Knife back on Tracer, so... As he's chasing targets, 41%. Two down, third down from Viper. Another Helix. As Sungan here, just... Oh, just kill me already, guys. But 99% because yep. of those swaps. But it doesn't count unless it's 100 G Clef. And... It certainly does not. 3, 2, 1. Not going to secure this Flashpoint. Viper. Doing a ton of damage there, got a Helix Rocket kill. Knife really the main character of this one. And they have Coalescence for this choke point. This Petals is playing Genji, which is, which is not normally. Um, check him, PC. Down he goes. Down knife. he goes. That's already ever since the... Okay, Terra. And a big stick and a double. How did Zoo get caught in that? It was too? just too close by. And with the Coalescence coming through, it's going to be a full wipe. I think this is already 7th or 8th uh, kill coming down from Knife. And since the switch. Yeah, he 
But it turns out when he's on the hero that he likes to play, that's better. Oh, Doom! Okay, he'll get one back. He's gonna say hiya to the observers. So I'm back on Doomfist. And by the way, just to, to contextualize this for people, Knife is not the Tracer player on this roster, it's Viper. <laughs> <laughs> Knife is a soldier, the yeah, hitscan. He's the, he's the hitscan uh -huh. player. Um, long range hitscan, that is. Plays Sojourn, uh, plays Cassidy, is With sound down. barrier. Yeah, four man, uh, four man barrier comes down. The machine lures off, and immediately Viper finds the kill. Sing on, last man standing. Don't even need that beautiful tracking forward to take. Hello. I'm ready for some beautiful tracking. I am too. It's been a while. Where's Max? Where's Taimu? <laughs> Where's Taimu? I see Taimu streaming sometimes. Yeah, Hope we have Nozzle well. now. I miss Taimu. Yeah, we got Nozzle. Um, okay, Sungan's gonna switch to Junker Queen. That's the new meme. Proxies onto the Moira. Try to match the healing and coalesce's timing. Knife. Knife. Bit of a drop there. Bit of a miss. Trying to prove himself. Or to the team. Daddy. Has the potential to be the better. The tracking? Oh, you see him track proxies there. That beautiful was... tracking, G Club. Beautiful. This is a thing of beauty. The Moira healing. Oh, he's down. He helixed himself. He helixed himself, and they win the fight. He helixed himself, and they win the fight. No, no cap. cap. <laughs> no. <laughs> Our observer. No cap. No cap. No comedy, man. Uh, Bliss is like, oh, hold on. Well, my bad. Hold on. That, I'm the support, right? I'm, that's my duty. Okay, I've got it. Back Viper. He's playing Torbjorn. He's pulling a page out of Stalker's book. Hey, Torbjorn, we've seen it yesterday. Torbjorn. Competitive. Torbjorn. Flash point. Yeah, Torbjorn May Yujung, Wrecking Ball. Yujung City. It's totally real. It's a real thing. It's it's not, but it is right now. Metal Slate. Oh. Where are okay. you at? Nope. Shout, Shout out to Arhan. Shout out to Arhan. Zero blade there. <laughs> it was an Arhan tribute. G Club. Now only OG it. Overwatch fans it. will get that reference. I see it. I feel it. They're bringing a lot of OGs. You know, Arhan AKM was a, uh, the, the other day. Arhan was a Heroes of the Storm player. G Club. You and I cast him. I know. Back in the day. Was he MVP Sky? I feel like he was. Or maybe OG early MVP days. Black. Yeah. It was like early days. Old, but. Anyway, he, he played Overwatch a little bit. His Dragon Blades were legendary. Legendary in many ways. Sung on? Okay. Bit of a fight back. Knife down. Hey, he's a... But the oh. point's still not touched! No, no touch. I want to talk more about Arhan. Arhan is a, an Overwatch World Cup champion, G Club. Anyway, back to this game. <laughs> Hammer fight! Hammer fight! Okay, here we go! Oh, Viper missed Pedals! a few of those. Viper, beat them, do what they want. Oh, Viper cheated. He cheated. He cheated. Hold and Sungan's gonna. Wait, why aren't they pausing? That's actually that's that's not allowed. He cheated, and Sungan he he that There's no way he, you get punished for that. That's actually against the rules of hammer fights. That's actually against regulations. That is not <laughs> sportsmanship. Think, yeah, that was not sportsmanship. That's, that's against conduct. the sportsmanship. <laughs> that's right. Esportsmanship. That was against the sports. That was not sportsmanlike conduct. <laughs> He will be punished by proxies now. Punish him, proxies. <laughs> okay, he's punished. Give me a machine. Poor lesson. Deliver some more damage, but yet he already, of course, controlling the point. Here's knife. Blizzard and oh, Rip the rampage, rampage escape. escape. The oh rampage my God. escape. We've seen it. But he gets caught. The temporary escape by a rampage where he escaped temporarily, but then was picked off afterwards. 40% G-Clef! Yeti's, Yeti's on! Match point here for Flashpoint! 52%! Let's see that minefield on the spawn Yeti's with the wall! back faster! With the with wall! The and the Sombra! Okay. Are they going to have the Torbjorn? The minefield? The minefield? minefield? The Where? minefield? Where? Where? Are you going to place it? The machine, Viper down. The minefield? Any minefields? Took the way for delay. Please Any hack. minefields? Still pulls out the beach! Nicely done from Blaze! <laughs> he's, 
And then that's 99 that contested, but maybe not for long. All right, and here's irony and the rest of the team. Somebody tell Viper that he doesn't get far up play time for just swapping the far in here. It doesn't actually affect <laughs> not his there. stats. And that is it with the team comp. That will just be it. Hey, the wild card certainly not over yet, but it almost seems like it with that image on screen as Wolf is struggling to keep his mic grabbed. Drop the mic <laughs> as that was a flashpoint as dude. Let me guys watch this. I'm going to have two minutes. <laughs> oh! This is certainly a wild. How many card. eyes can I have, G Club? No! Oh, it, it cuts one off, so I can still only maximum of two eyes. <laughs> Way too wild. It's keeping, keeping. <laughs> the screen is trying to keep you uh, as a human form, okay? And that's just. I need, I need to just mention old Overwatch things to feel normal, like Arhan, um, like, like Lunatic High. Uh, Remember like, how Torbjorn was actually a thing on the body? Yeah. At the beginning yeah, 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 of Overwatch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when we had like Keep Farrah. hitting the turret with yes. the hammer. When we had Farrah. Keep hitting me with the hammer. Before Maybe I'll come core, back to normal. Before, before Molten Core. <laughs> and we will have that break. So we tur uh, when we come back, hopefully we are back to normal.
All right, G Clef, we're back. You sound normal. I'm not normal. I want to talk about a man from Singapore. Okay. His name is Cameron Kua. I'm listening. Better known to his friends as Meme Machine. Meme Machine. Also known as Easy Clap. Easy Clap? He does also go by Easy Clap. Okay. He started his career in 2020. It wasn't an easy start. He played in the Zotac Overwatch Community Tournament 2020 Asia number no. four. That's where he, you where he finished 17th to 21st. And he rose up, got top eight, finished eighth place in the Overwatch Ace 2020 Cup. That's an improvement. Matched it in the PA Community Rivals number one, but then moved up to fifth, sixth. He's making vast improvements in 2022. Ooh. Is already up in the Singapore Collegiate Class 2021. Then in the Pacific Prequel, moved up to third place. Wow. Started Big playing steps. in open division. All right. Ends up getting seventh, eighth there. Okay. Plays in Overwatch World Cup in the Singapore Open Trials. Seventh, eighth there. Then he goes into into the SEA 2023 spring, second place. His team makes second. That's right. Moves into contenders, moves up to fifth, six, gets third place in Pacific, right? That's mm -hmm. where he is now. He's moved all the way up. You know what? How many years did that take? It took four years for him to actually get up to a wild card match. He almost went to an international LAN. My man, Easy Clap. You know what? I think it's I think he gets a chance to play DPS on this third map. I think he's I think he's earned it. He spent four years grinding out Overwatch. That's right. My man, Meme Machine. People don't take him seriously. They don't respect Easy his clap. ID. Mm. They don't respect his ID. They don't respect this man. You they see will. what the work he was trying to put in on that that last map? I think he gets a chance to play DPS. I think we should give him a chance. What do you think, G Clef? I think the guy should Certainly yes. be subbed in. Certainly, yes. That you guy put him in support for a minute. See how he likes it, huh? Won't be memeing too much when you get that shot in the head. That will be the DPS if he gets a chance. Let's see. Let's see what this guy's made of. I I I put a challenge out there. I'm putting a challenge Hashtag out there to challenge. three two one diving. Put me machine on DPS. Really? Yeah. I, I'm 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 calling out right now. I think I think he I think he deserves a chance, G Clef, to prove what is to test his metal against an insane Korean then who team. Who do you like swap out from DPS? I think it's time for Ju to go. He got headshot too many times by knife. Put that guy on support. <laughs> <laughs> that support. Okay, so it'll be Ju proxies then on support. Yeah, and pedal meme machine. Yeah, that's what I. I, all right. I mean, I'm, I am I am memeing a little bit, but oh, I do yeah. think a I, lot. That's a what lot. I would. That's what I would say. Like I, I want to see that G Clef. We're going to Midtown, and this is the beginning. All right, this is the beginning of the reverse sweep where Viper's injustice on the Torbjorn Hammer fight is punished. This is the time for the return of 3-2-1 diving. Can they go to OWCS Asia? No, but can they regain their honor, G Clef, and come back to prove that they could defeat the fourth best team from Korea? The start of the reverse sweep. The start of the reverse sweep. Starts here, the best Sigma map for point A. Midtown, their selection, 3-2-1 diving. And let's see what they're up to because Yeti, that esportsmanship from Suravasa could not be handled. We should never see that again. Hammer fight should be go always been done 1v1. And that was just wrong. And Sungan pressed the button and said, that's not how you do it. That's not how you do it. Me machine DPS G Club! He's doing it! Juice playing support! Zu Ilari. Me machine on Echo? Let's see what he's playing. Oh man, it's time. Me machine. Easy clap. The man himself. Four years Pushing to get first. to this moment. And they said, that's right, me machine. I'm putting you in. It's your uh, Torbian. He's there to get revenge for Viper's transgressions. Let's see if you will have manners this time. You know, the that rule cannot be broken. Uh-uh. Okay. That, that was a red card immediately. Hammer's out. Hammer's out. I think some lobby chat may have been exchanged between I, these yes. players. I think the other four should just be watching right next to. One. Man, Viper doesn't understand how these two are going to He just doesn't get it, G-Club. Life Fever for proxies. Okay. Oh, boost that turret up. All right, they're not going to actually do the duel. Yes, boost that turret up so it, it cannot be destroyed easily. They offered, but Viper declined. 
He's a coward. Zhu just, Zhu just went all the way and got down immediately from Blizz. Why Here's isn't Avril co-streaming today when Viper's playing like this, when Viper's doing all these bad things? Where's, where's, where's that bro when we need him the most? Here's Knife. Me Machine somehow made it all, right, all it was, the way. It was a good try. It was a good try for Me Machine, but it's, it's just his first death. It's okay. Well, first did, death. Did Knife oh, distract? Oh, man. It was just his first death. Hold on. He's got another shot. How is how is Zoo and Sungan? How did they even rotate all the way here? Um, I think they were using the WASD keys. Oh, Me Machine died again. Oh, that's, that's rough. Okay, two deaths. But hold on. Okay. He's... He's still got a lot Viper, of Overwatch Viper, stuff to play. Up. You're not doing anything. You only have 21%, which means that you didn't do anything. Yeah, Mimus is first doing fight. 10 percent more damage so far than Viper. I know. That's all I'm saying. Oh, Bob! Already? What? Must been a lot of damage coming out from Knife. Proxies. Bob, I guess that counts as a half kill. All right, Knife's down. This is a huge opportunity for Me Machine to show his stuff. I want to watch more Meme Machine. I want to watch more Meme Machine. Hold on, there he is. Side captive, up. Oh, he got captivated. To be honest, we were all captivated by Meme Machine, though. Yeah, early on, even. Cameron from Singapore. The moment he swapped. Or even before that, Irony Air. Some trades. Proxy's okay. All right, he's going to play Tracer now. I don't know what's happening here, but. All I'm telling you is I'm watching Me Machine. He swapped Tracer. Lots of swaps He took happening. out the turret. He took out the pylon. Okay, capture. Coming through. Maybe First a tick. tick. Maybe a tick. Okay, everyone backing off the side of the room now. Yeti actually changing into a nice comp except for that Torbjorn. Nano on Dong up. Knife. Pedals. Hold Play on. Playing serious with the captive son. Proxies. Extra damage. We we'll have the boost. Me machines getting closer to a pulse bomb. No, Yeti's. Yeti fell exactly into the trap card. Yeah, they knew. Trap card activated. They knew nothing, G Clip. The song they must come. They had no idea. The background song must come. Trap card activated. Tomax well, got his sunglasses on, but 69%. Nice. Nice build there, Me Machine. All right, they're contesting. I actually thought this was done, but hold up. Not exactly. Sound barrier's out? Yeah, even with the sound barrier, Dong Ha just cast control now. Okay, but two dead. Three to one diving. Should have the tick, unless. Hold up, this is a wrecking ball. And he's a Dong Ha. Dong Ha 1v9. And he will continue to roll. He's roll. rolling. And roll. And roll. Pile drive, oh. all, pile drive into nothing, but he's still there. Pulse, 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 pulse. You Come on, Meme Machine. To closer you to can it. do it. That was almost possible. Against Knife. Not quite. Dead eyes out. Dead eyes out. Dead eyes out. Dog still here. Me Machine's down. <laughs> just sitting back. Like, okay. Uh, time to stop rolling. Mag grenade. Mag grenade. Get T. Cube, molten core, minefield, three seconds, no one can touch. Me Sunan. machine, me machine, where's me machine? Me machine, blinking, blinking, me machine. Blinking, me machine. Blinkin, machine. Flux, the flux. Three men, might not get at this. Two kills me coming machine, out no. from someone. Oh, everyone, what happened? Everyone dead. Knife got me machine. He took him out, 92.6. I thought when the right click came out from Ju, I thought that was the moment where he was gonna prove he is also a great support player. The He's hero. gonna push. The pile driver off the point, but only got like two percent out of it. weren't able to finish the cap. Singon had the had a mad flux there, so full still wasn't enough. Full hold, just ninety-two percent. But now three, two, one diving. Now the opportunity for the fuller hold. That's right, B Machine. He's still playing DPS. Yep, you can't stop in the middle. What's he gonna play? Is it time for Widowmaker? Time for Genji? Ash. Ash. Is my guess. Hold up. Tracer. Tracer, Ash, defense. Sing on and proxies. I guarantee you guys are logged in, though. But they're just still thinking. Oh, this fight. Look at this. Watch me, machine. Down two kills. Oh, knife got him. Yeah, let's watch the flowers. I don't want to watch me, machine dying again. I wanted to see me, machine pop off. Mm -hmm.
He's still got a chance. Yeah, it's springtime for the northern hemisphere, at least in Korea, where we are at. Yeah, it's allergy season for me. Yeah, it's cherry blossoms. All right. Five, four, okay. Here we go. Yeti. One. Viper's still forward staying position on Corvia. For, for three, two, one diving. Very forward position. Don't have feeling comfortable on that ball. I don't use Miata. Zoo, what are you doing there? Kicking out, and that's a bet. Not ideal, not ideal for three, two, one diving. No Mi machine. Mi machine has to pop off. This is the moment. With a lot of your teammates dead. Tracers. He's down, G-Clef, he's down, but he's oh, Tracer, no. he can get back oh, quickly. No. Oh, they gotta no. buy time, they gotta buy time. Zoom on, all the way up here. No one in the cat, okay. Viper, you just have to be the first. Can you just leave the turret here? Oh, nice shot. Cameron's coming back. That's one take. He's coming back, g -Cluff. He's on Tracer, he's coming back. Silence. Don't tell me he's not, Zoom. he's coming back. He's gonna touch. Purple, there he is. There he is, no! No, <laughs> no! Almost. He didn't get in there. Not quite, battle second kill. Second pick, is this the end? It's the end. Of the amazing Yeti run in the wild card. Some contest. Sungan, power drive. Sungan, just with the block. Slams. 1v1. One 1v1. One. One no one It's touch. not fair for Doomfist. It's no not a fair matchup. Touch. Sungan, no, that hamster. That'll be it! A 3 0 victory and 3 to 1 diving. All e right. Even with the swap from Me Machine, was. Yeti? Not yet enough. We already knew after it came one, but they are going to OWCS Asia. They will compete in our international tournament here. A very wild and crazy series we did just watch. Um, Thank you. Thanks to Yeti. Shout out to Yeti for making this one a little bit more fun. <laughs> we'll see who ends up getting player of the match in a little bit uh, a little bit later on. Mm -hmm. But, also, I mean, the real story here is... I can't believe Viper on TV in front of thousands of people broke the rules of Torbjorn Hammer Hammerfight. Someone clipped that. And I'm sure it's, it it's going to be on the front page of New York it. Times tomorrow. Wall Street Journal's already got a piece going. Okay. Oh man, not Tell a me a front sign. page of Invin. Not a good sign for the global economy. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I don't know what's going to do to Activision Blizzard stocks, but I, I tell you <laughs> what, it's going to be on the front page. It is, it is going to make waves. What, what? It, wait until Avril finds out. Oh. What Viper has done. He's going to teach. He's going to preach. Oh, that, and uh, that's still the result. Three zero. And Yeti just proving again that Korean standard is a little different here. As Wolf is still getting fixed, but it'll take time. At least before Asia. It'll, you'll have a few weeks. <laughs> so you can actually... What if it... Ah, okay. So that's it goes. That's how it goes. Okay. I've done this. I've done this in challenges before. I'm, I have a little bit of experience with the crazy green screen. <sighs> G Cliff, that was um, that was a day of Overwatch that you and I experienced. It was not long. It was not long. Certainly. It was not long. It was three not matches. Very long at all. It felt like two matches. Yeah, it, it was very short. It was just very. You know, you know how sometimes life passes before your eyes. You know, sometimes like time seems to just it flies right past you. Mm -hmm. You're like, next thing I knew, that time had passed. Not today. I felt Not like today. I was trapped in this for an eternity. What? Viper still Boom, gets play on the match. Him. The Korean castles are right there. I'm going to have to talk to him after let's this. Let's break the doors. Well, let's drop the bike well, and just go. Because G-Clef and I are honorable Overwatch casters. Yes. We voted for Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> we voted for Bliss. Because the one and only. Did Bliss, Bliss did two things, right? One thing he did was play consistently well throughout the entire series. Sound barriers were good. He was trying to win the whole time. He didn't take any troll picks. And two, didn't cheat in a Torbjorn Hammer Duel. So for me, that's player of the match. But you know what? If the Korean casters think Viper is a very fancy soldier and had some tack visors and tracking was beautiful, I mean, that's, that's, that's their prerogative. But, you know, you can vote however you want. I'm just saying, G Club, this is not my first choice. Or second choice, or third choice, or fourth choice. He's it's my fifth choice. He's not even in the list for me, man.
Hold on. This Torbjorn. They better not put the kill in the Torbjorn Hammer duel in here. I think that was. Oh no, we skipped passed. it. Because we can't show that again. It's, we can't show that on screen. It, it's rated rated R. Too much. He's lucky. Too much violence. He's lucky Overwatch is not a Kespa sanctioned game, or they would be looking into this one. <laughs> for those 8% voters for 3 2 1 diving, respect to you guys. As a 3 2 a 3 0 victory, as Yeti certainly did not lose a single map, as you can see. And a bit of a contest in between for that 3 1, but that will be it. As again, the fourth seed from Korea uh, certainly is. Tears above the other regions currently. Yeah. Let's see what Veril um, and Insomnia can get done. Um, I, I am also looking forward to, to WAF as well. And, uh, or DAF, excuse me. I don't know why I said WAF. Thinking about WAC. WAC. Now Crazy yes. Raccoon, of course, after their announcement yesterday. So we do have four Korean teams. Uh, we, and then we have Veril, Insomnia, and then Daff and Honeypot. Honeypot having the upset win there. Mm -hmm. So a pretty good lineup of teams for Asia. Eight of them. And this is going to be from April 25th to April 28th. And tickets will be going on sale soon. Yes, tickets will be going on sale soon enough. And the website will be revealed later. And yeah, the tickets will go on sale on April 12th. So... Mark your calendars because it's not just for the it's not just for the Koreans here. Uh, I heard that it will be available yes, for foreigners, anyone. Yeah, foreigners, anyone. Korean space aliens, as long as you have your ID. And uh, as long as you can travel to Korea. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice time to travel to Korea, it's springtime. Uh, warm, not too cold, not too hot. Um, yeah, anyone anyone who is around or wants to travel here, uh, here is the bracket. Uh, so it all culminates on Sunday, the April 28th, where we will have a grand final and crown the first OWCS Asia champions. We already had Team Falcons win Korea. And uh, if you take a look at the bracket, Yeti faces Veril, actually, in their first match. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a, they, they just keep getting to hit these international teams right away. Um, Veril will be, I think, a tougher challenge than Six Blow, but I'm looking forward to seeing if, uh, if Yeti can do it again. Yes, and as you can see, only four four days thursday friday saturday sunday and we got a lot of matches to go through so there will be four <laughs> matches per day basically yeah now crazy Ra raccoon versus insomnia is also kind of interesting because it's a japan versus japan match in a way yeah in a way uh, if you think it's about a japanese the org, org it is. and so that one i think is gonna do big numbers g clef i think that's one that that people should definitely check out mm -hmm. um so there will be four matches played on Thursday, so it's a lot of Thursday Overwatch. Thursday and Friday and Saturday, except for Sunday, because Sunday, of course, for the final game, it is first four, so slightly less in terms of matches in numbers, but every other day, four matches. Yeah. Full packed, high level, as best teams clash against each other. Oh, that Vero versus Jetty seems very, very interesting too. Yeah, no, that that one looks like the best off. one. Falcons oh. versus Daff should be interesting as well, and then FTG Honeypot. I feel like FTG probably crushed that one, but Yeti Veril. I want to say it'd be interesting, but you know what? I, I gave Six Blow credit, as you know. I I was like, no, Chiclef, come on, Six Blow could play a little bit closer. Like maybe they take a, a map, and you were like, no, Wolf, and then no, they did not. It was not close. <laughs> it was not close. It, it was it was not, and I was expecting, but not this much a one-sided game. But I was expecting Yeti to win uh, at least. That was my expectation. But what a day. And uh, hope you guys were also entertained. We tried our best, I would say. And of course, our tickets again go on sale on April 12th, is what I was re uh, delivered. Yes. And what's that? We so. we uh, revealed later. We have Instagram and also X. Uh, if you want to, uh, you do want to follow our channel. Yeah, follow the official Asia. channels. Follow um, the channel, and you will not miss a thing. And follow me on Twitter. I'm at Proxy Wolf. Yeah, me too. Well, at G Clef and A. There you go. Yes. I think so. 9K Achilles, Hex, Unknown. Ah, whatever. You can look them up. <laughs> <laughs> you're still broken. You're not fixed. You can look them up. They're out there. Come back to Normal Wolf. We need you. The match today, the three matches. Do you think this microphone cord can support me if I lean back on my no! charity? No, Wolf. <laughs> now we need your parents here. <laughs> Uh, but that'll be it. Uh, we will close out the wild matches. Oh, uh, some 
Great matches. Thank you guys for being patient ways. with Broken Thank you Wolf. Guys. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming. We had a lot of fun. Wild card. We will continue with OTBCS Asia in a couple of weeks. Make sure to grab your ticket if you're coming to Korea as you can follow us in socials. But that's going to do it. Foxy Wolf, G Clef signing out. See you guys in just a couple of weeks for Overwatch Champion Series Asia.